Yeah. Okay, we're taking, uh, we're stopping <laughs> the show, and <laughs> no. we're going to talk about this. Adam Curry, John C. Devorak. It's Thursday, February 5th, 2015, and time for your Gitmo Nation Media Assassination, Episode 693. This is No Agenda. Looking for kick-ass video editors in Jordan and coming to you from the Crackpot Condo in the capital of the Drone Star State, Austin, Texas. FEMA Region 6 in the morning, everybody. I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where, uh, let's see, I have a paper jam in my printer. I'm John C. Dvorak. It's Crackpot and Buzzkill in the morning. <laughs> okay. I thought I'd go with the ironic anticlimactic introduction. It's, all, it's a always a long-winded <laughs> new one you just dreamed up. <laughs> it's always a winner. <laughs> oh man well you were right john i have to say you were right all these years i've i've uh denied climate change decline no 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 but uh i am a neat freak aha yes i Woo! <laughs> Woo! so virgos let me explain. Virgos are supposedly traditionally kind of OCD, very neat freaks. And I've always said, no, I'm not because I make messes. And it's not anything to do with Virgo ish. Although most Virgos mm-hmm. I've known, it, it's supposed to be a Virgo trait. Well, OK, well, it doesn't matter. You so that's even better because you identified my neat freakishness. Yeah. Without oh, yeah. even uh, coordinating that with uh, with the fact that I'm Virgo. And I guess I didn't know be until I stopped marrying my mother every single time. And now I have to do all this myself? Oh, man. What? Oh, I, I'm, uh, it's really You're good. It's You're, re- you quality neat freaker? <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> what do you mean it's bad? Oh, it's like, I'm always like, oh, there's a spot. Let me clean it up. Oh, wow. this, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, oh so you uh, it's, and I'm trying it's to. It's bad because it's so obsessive. It's very obsessive. Yeah, there is what I said. Oh, man. It's like, okay, the toilet roll. It's not, it's almost the other way. I'll just replace is it. it. Me, over the top or underneath? It's somewhere in the middle, but leaning towards over the top. That's been possible. Yeah, yeah. However, this is good, and this kind of brings me to a topic that has been um, in my face ever since you brought it up, the Dvorak Collective, about me doing a Hot Pockets tour. Oh, you mean with the... Uh... Hot Pockets! Yeah, Did you're... we talk about this on the show or this after the no, show? No, this is on... <laughs> well, the reason everyone's been emailing me about it is because we talked about it on the show. Ah! Yes. Uh, about me getting an Airstream and driving around. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, and you being a neat freak, you could actually do this. <laughs> so, so this is, you know, because, you know, the problem is most people like myself would have, we'd go on this thing and the, within a week, the airstream would be a mess and you'd have to be meeting people a lot. And many times you'd probably have a little uh, coffee or something in the airstream and you'd and humiliate yourself. The guy would come right. in and go, yeah, oh sucks. man, this That's guy's horrible. like a slob. <laughs> Screw this right. show. Right. Yeah, um, but you would be like, wow. Um, and by the way, it would have to be Hot Pockets, the Tourette's Tour. But I, think that would be, <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be better. Sh- shaking the USA. <laughs> um, so a lot of people, for some reason, and you know, we have um, a Facebook group. Uh, there's an uh, In the Morning Facebook group, and there's a subreddit. And people are like, yeah, this is great. And I have no idea why they think this is so great for me. Like somehow in my in my sorrow and my pain and wallowing, I'm supposed to go be alone on the road. <laughs> you know, it's like and why, another visit to Suicide Hill. How are people romanticizing the heartbreak? Is this uh, is this how it works? Yeah, I got to go on the I, road. I got the idea before you broke up. <laughs> and I don't I think people would still respond positively because you. It's as if you, you're a type of person, a rambling man. Right. Rambling man. Well, here's what I want to say about this. I think it's a very good idea. I think uh, th- there is a time that I could, th- the time in my life that I could actually do this for an extended period of time, then go out and, and drive around, uh, would be now in this year. I, I agree with that. Um, however, at this very moment... Uh, you know, considering the things I'm learning, like my n- f- neat freakishness, and I need to, I need a little bit of a stable environment for uh, for a bit here. No, no, no. Yes, 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 no, yes, you yes, put you yes. In a full mode responsibility. No, no, no. You no, got to no, drive. You no, got to buy gasoline. You got to clean no, up the trailer. No, John, you you got to meet people. No, you got to no, get out. You got to. No, no, no. 
Yes. I'm not ready. You have no idea that this is, I, I need to, you know, I, I, it should only take me a couple months to get my feet back on the ground. It would take you more longer than that to find a good airstream. Please, won't you? Help me get my feet back on the ground. You can stop that at any time. Ringo! Ringo! <laughs> I'm thinking around uh, June or July, but I have some shit, some stuff to wrap up here. Like, you know, the closing down stuff. Okay. So maybe. I, I didn't tell you to jump in a trailer tomorrow and take off like a maniac. No. But uh, I, uh, I do want people to really seriously. I, I think it should not be an RV. I think it should be uh, an Airstream that I drag yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to drive around an RV. So you get to Airstream, you park it in one of these places, and then you unhook it, and you go drive, and then you can go. You're on your own. You can go drive around. You don't have to have a damn trailer or RV, a big thing clunker to exactly. can't park. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's out of the way. Okay. And then the Airstreams are, are, you know, they're recyclable. You buy one, and you pretty much it doesn't depreciate like the RVs and some of this other crap. I'm going to, yeah, that's true. Well, it's just, it's a project. We're working on it. Um, people can start thinking. And there's a lot of push for um, Hot Pockets Europe, Hot Pockets Down Under. Uh, so stuff to think about. But I just need a couple months just to. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for understanding. Okay. Well, um, my printer didn't work, so I can't print out the the m- many uh clips i have for today mm. uh do you want to do something Amber. about it or are you okay no it's okay when i'm gonna every once in a while get up and try to <laughs> try, try to, to, to unjam it. it well something really big happened um and, and uh it was so big that uh, i i really we need to talk about this right off the bat today this new uh isis isil is video uh which we'll okay. just we'll just call that burning man uh holy crap um i i got the original version of this video i'm sure people by now have at least heard about it although many of you have not seen it still very this is probably the hardest one to find although that is changing a little bit now actually here's um it's very easy to find fox has it posted they, i was gonna say fox just posted this um uh, it, was, it was posted a couple of days ago yeah, actually yeah and they but they they are the first, and so far as I know, the only ones. Uh, no other Murdoch properties have posted this. Here's actually the way uh, Shep Smith, uh, d- <laughs> he described the entire video to us. We're not going to show you the video, obviously. No. It's 23 <laughs> minutes plus that video, and 22. it shows the terrorists burning a Jordanian military hero alive. A hero. Uh, a hero. I- I'm-, I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah. All of it, every bit of it. I watched it over the last hour, not because I wanted to. I I absolutely did not. I watched it because I felt like those of you who want to know what's on it, but don't want to watch it or be subjected to some sort of gruesome descriptive adjectives. Which is, of course, what we have identified is the the media was so gung-ho to put... You could put dead Palestinian children on television. That's not a problem. You can show dead kids uh, lying on the beach. That's not a problem. You can show kids burning up. You can show all of these things. But when it comes to this video, which we is such an important one, uh, that we can't show that to you. Well, you I, if if they were honest about it and said we could show you the video, but it's so boring <laughs> and it's twenty two minutes long, and our news stories only last about sixty seconds, makes it impossible. Okay. Yes, it's boring, but the actual the the part of the video that is important is the burning. Yeah, and and the whole setup and everything. And I've I've spent a lot of time on this. And I sent this to a number of um, video professionals, people who who do a lot of uh, video, and uh, unanimously they all said this is a very expensive production, multiple cameras. Really, a a it had to be a modern day Hollywood budget, mm. and yes, hold, bear with me. I'm telling you, you know, the this was directed, this was well thought out ahead of time. Um, the the consensus is ninety seven percent. There is no one that anybody I know in the Middle East 
who could create this the way it was made. This is not their culture, this type of editing, this type of... You've, no, you've, I, that I agree with. I mean, you've seen you've seen uh, uh, Middle Eastern TV. Oh, 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 you know, they got the graphics and stuff, but it's, it's a different it's flow. It's crap. Yeah, it's a different, yeah. a total different cadence, everything. This is a Western-made piece. From what I've been able to deconstruct, this was probably actually made in Jordan. Uh, the uniforms, which are so new of the... Um, the so-called ISIS ISIL uh, executioners in the video. The, so, the creases are still in the uniforms. Everything is just completely pristine. You look at holsters. And, and these are the exact same uniforms that the Jordanian army uses. The only thing uh, that is different is instead of the Jordanian uh, military patch on the arm, there's just a little small square of Velcro where right. the patch would be. Yeah. I, I I didn't notice any of this. And only I'm going to, this is the last time I'm going to use this. Only a neat freak would spot this stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's true. And then I really looked very, I, I played it over and over and over again. Couple things that a uh, couple other things. Um, so we have the open, if you have not seen this video, the full 600 megabyte thing is going to be in the show notes, six, nine, three dot no agenda notes.com. You could deconstruct it all you want. Um, the, uh, we have our our hero, our Jordanian pilot hero, walking towards his uh, demise in this beautiful slow mo. You've got, <laughs> this is so you're, overdramatized is the right uh, is is the correct uh, description of it. Because yeah, so, of course, this is what you do when you know you're going to be killed. You know, you walk and you yeah, how you doing? I'm ready to die. Right. You don't try to make a run for it. No. <laughs> now and then you have this cage. Which has no bottom. I mean, it's not like if, if I were on fire, I wouldn't try to, I don't know, lift the cage, which then we see demolished, which looks like the hokiest piece of crap with yeah, now, broken little tubes. Is, <laughs> yeah, this is where the thing, as far as I'm concerned, was sketchy. First, they, the guy's on fire. The whole cage is on fire. They got kerosene in the, everywhere, I guess. Beautifully done. This, this was almost, I felt... It was a Hollywood movie Quentin style. Tarantino style fire. with He's the... Cr- listen, cr- cr- the cross inside the cage with the big... <laughs> the dramatization of this long... This this wick. <laughs> it was, it was like... That was dumb. It was like a, a Tarantino thing. And it was very much like he may have done it. And so they... As the guy's burning to death, or he's dead, I guess, and they bring He's in a melting. Big, Half loader, <laughs> yeah, or yeah, whatever they're called. And, uh, I don't know, but whatever they bring this uh, this piece of road gear in there and dump a bunch of rubble on him and smash the cage, and then they run him over. Right, that's the part that got me. <laughs> they run him over with right. this big uh, piece of gear. Um, and it's really the big lies that are ones that are overlooked. I mean, all these little details, but the big lie is this is not how anyone would react normally if they're set on fire, particularly with this. I mean, this cage is just ridiculous. Um, now, so there's two styles of video that we have seen in the past um, several months that we have been looking at. We have the, the traditional beheading video, which doesn't really show beheading. We got Jihadi John, green screen, orange jumpsuit. And it has a, a level of uh, production value, which is so easily debunkable with, you know, stills of heads on bodies, which is clearly poor work. It's just a still. So it looks more like the head has been Photoshopped on, onto the body, onto the the back. And then we have this style of video, which we saw earlier, but really didn't get any legs. That was the one where it was the, you know, the uh, deconstructed to be a, like a 12 hour shoot with, you know, uh, all kinds of continuity issues, but where they, <clears throat> supposedly sh- uh, shot these host- these um, prisoners execution style, which you also don't really see. But it, I think that this was, that there is a, hu- a full-on production, and this is probably episode two, there may be two or three more that were uh, produced in this style. And it really doesn't even matter if anyone, if the guy it was the real guy or not, if he burned, it, it, what was meant to happen is now taking place. Game is now on. Finally, we see the strategy. Jordan is going to go take out Assad. That's it. That's what this was for. That's the whole the whole reason for this high end production. For this, I mean, can anybody 
The re- I think the reason why news organizations don't want to show it is they don't they know it's fake. They don't want to be culpable for lying and contributing to this next thing that's going to happen. They, they, I mean, come on, Jack. Every, everybody they don't want to be a stooge. Well, I don't know whether the, they're going to take out Assad. That's a good idea. But oh, no. the, Look, coincidence, oh, yeah. the, the coincidence <laughs> between uh, the Jordanian king being, being in, in D.C. Exactly. The exact same day. That they exactly. Released, exactly. has been called up by a lot of uh, observers. A lot of observers have pointed this out. Well, let's listen to MSNBC, who was all in on this, of course. And we first we have the uh, let's see, this is the armed services chair. Mr. Chairman, uh, what we've seen is another element of uh, the end game of a cult of extreme violence and, and insanity, actually, uh, from ISIS with uh, yesterday's uh, burning to death of the Jordanian pilot. How would you propose to co- which is now just taken as fact as truth? I mean, the president said every, everybody's all in. We all saw it. If not, go online and seek it out for yourself. Combat this element of violence, which which is so extreme to be preposterous. How would you propose to combat this? Well, in the short term, I think there are two things we've got to do. One is to support the Jordanians. Uh, our committee met with the king yesterday. This is the coincidence. He gave us kind of a laundry list of things he needs, like fuel and, and, and munitions and equipment. And he expressed frustration that it takes so long for our bureaucracy to get something approved to get to him now this is very important this is important this is the chairman of the armed services committee saying you know we have to we have to expedite we got to get him stuff and training if we already have thousands of troops in jordan of course we fly from the air bases in jordan look at the map see where jordan is kind of right there to go into Syria. So so that's a, a first and immediate step. Immediate. Secondly, I think we need to support... Look, look for some kind of immediate uh, measure, maybe even a, an executive order or something to get that going without uh, legislation. The king and President Sisi in Egypt, that. when they try to encourage other national leaders and Muslim clerics to reclaim the Muslim religion uh, and, and to isolate these people who have distorted it so much and, 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 and in a way reduce their recruiting appeal. Finally, we've got, uh, we've got to accelerate our efforts in Syria and Iraq. The best thing we can do is to show some victories here oh. versus this cult, as you say, which has really still got the momentum even though we've been bombing them from the air for several months. This is so perfect now. It all I'm even thinking they might have had two teams as they were setting this up just to, you know, competing teams for video, just whoever could produce something that whoa, we have a caller. Hello, you're caller 100 on Z100. What's the phrase that pays? <laughs> <laughs> um it, 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 this is, and of course, Jordan has always been um, in strife with uh, with Syria, and Assad is, has always been quite worried because you know Jordan is the stooge for uh, certainly for the United States, and we're right oh, yeah. on the border there, and and we need someone else to do it. We can't do it for a whole bunch of you know reasons that you know, pertain to Russia mainly. We can't be seen as us doing it. It has to be Jordan. This is. Um, now we have, uh, this is kind of fun, just to show you how all in everybody is. This is Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, uh, uh, who was, uh, he starts off kind of funny. Well, let me just say to our... What? It's funny, the same clip I have. Oh, really? This one? Let's see. Well, let me just say to our prayers, I think, from all Americans, all West Virginians, for sure. <laughs> Do you have that one? We want to, all the West Virginians. I left that part out. <laughs> send their prayers to Jordan. Go out to the Jordanian family of that pilot and all Jordan. Yeah, West Virginia don't care about that, trust me. Jordanians, because it is a horrific situation that we li- witnessed and basically have seen. You know, we were we were privileged to see, uh, to talk to King Abdullah yesterday before he left the Armed Services Committee. Yeah, here we go. And with that, I think our resolve should be to give them all of the 
uh, all of the equipment, military equipment that they need uh -huh. to do the job and get it to them as quickly as possible, that's break right. down the barriers and all the red tape. And that's what we heard. Let us engage in this fight. We'll take this fight. Not one time did I hear King Abdullah ask for ground troops. Uh, but we need the expertise that we can to make sure that our support for them has the efficiencies that it must have and have the expertise. But with that being said, I, I think you're going to see today very quick movement from the Armed Services Committee uh -huh. uh, and how we deal with getting uh, equipment to them quicker uh, that they're going to be needing. And well, you saw that a little bit when McCain was, uh, who's the Armed Services guy in the Senate, Yeah, uh, was grilling the new Secretary of Defense, who, by the way, <laughs> seems to me to be a bit like a droopy dog uh, bonehead. I have that clip, too. Yeah, and he's asking about one thing or another. But it, it, this theory of yours, which I'll put in the red book, by the way, which is that, they're, that the Jordanians are going to attack Syria. They're uh, going to take out Assad. I'm more specific about this. Yeah, okay. They're going to attack. They're going to go in to get to supposedly get ISIS, but they're going to take out Assad yes. somehow. Yes. We'll have to see how that evolves. I, I think it's a good... Uh, a good possibility. I, the, I like this theory. The only the, the, the only reason why I'm so besides the obvious, you know, uh, things we're hearing now from the uh, from the Armed Services Committee, so much money went into this video. No one wants to show it on television because they know they they they, they know they do not. No one wants to after the fact have to say, yeah, um, yeah, we kind of knew that was going on. This is big, John. This is someone produced this shit. People know about this. This is this is not. Um, I can't believe that we're that we're not seeing people on television deconstructing this, saying, "Oh my God, look at how well this is made." No, this is what stupid people, particularly Americans, take as real. They look at this and say, "Oh man, that looks real," because it's what they're used to. This Hollywood is big. This is big. Yeah, I want to remind people to go back and watch Wag the Dog. <laughs> oh, please! And and how much better is this than Wag the Dog? This yeah, um, oh come on, this production is insane. Oh, it's mostly graphics moving around. Bullshit, John. Most bullshit. This is not easy to the the sound I didn't design say it alone. Was easy? Who said it was easy? I didn't say it was easy. It's not. It's. To me, it looks like a, it looks corny, amateurish. I, I, I really I, I, the the burning sequence looks. I'm not amateur. talking about the burning sequence. I'm talking about the twenty. I'm not talking. Who gives a shit about that propaganda? I don't care about that. That's that. No one cares. That is the un, unimportant bit. The important bit is this highly produced burning sequence. That's good shit. If we had made that at Mevio, we'd be like high fiving. It I, with the burning scene is quite good. I'll oh, give you that. It's but phenomenal. But curiously, if you start looking at burning scenes from uh, Hollywood, yeah, where the, the classic. Well, I was looking for one where very the, similar. Where the yeah, where yeah. the guy. My favorite yeah. it used to be when Siskel and Ebert both had their when they were both alive and did the show together. They used to have a segment of of their movie reviews called Dog of the Week, mm. and they had a little dog there with them called Sparky. And the dog of the week was generally <laughs> speaking week. a movie that came out with a guy on fire running through the street. It was kind of a right, running right, 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 right. And they would show a lot of these guys running, <laughs> waving their arms and running around in the street, totally on fire. Everything about them. And there was elements of that. My memory of those scenes in this video because it was, uh, if you see, there there are real videos of people on fire. Yeah, and they're not like this. So the, this is the this part better than those than the real yeah. guy on fire is but, not. But, as, this, but this is this is what I'm trying to say is that whoever is doing this, whoever wants this push, which, as I said, is, I believe is to have Jordan be the fall guy to take. Of course, it's going to be us. You know, we'll be training, you know, advising, whatever. Of course, it's going to be us. Well, the Russians probably already know that, too. They yeah, they're have to have a counter. Yeah, here. but this is for you. And this has to. Well, I think there is something there. But this is more for, you know, just for the general consensus so we can say what is them because this is for the public. And this video, somebody is so smart somewhere to say, you know what, if we really want to make this believable, we got to do Hollywood. That's what people believe. And I guarantee you that people seeing this, if you just did one of those man on the street things that all go, that's real. Because that this is where we're at. This is where people are. This is what we're used to. It's well, by the way, Brian, the gay crusader cracked me up. He said this is this whole thing with this fake um, you know, Hollywood sets for doing terrorism videos is almost lifted verbatim from a Max Headroom episode. 
um, which was uh, series one, episode five. And I watched it. It's, yeah, it's, it, the script is kind of what we're living through right now. Interestingly. Actually, Max Headroom should be on our the movie, which I think is better than the uh, TV, TV show. Oh, the TV is it's horrible to watch. Well, it's not horrible. Yeah, it is. Not, I watched it again. It's well, I guess it is. But whatever the case is, the movie I thought was fascinating. And they had a, the, the evil little kid hacker I thought was much better portrayed in the movie. It's a very... People should check that movie out. It's, it's short and, and kind of fun. In the plot summary of Max Headroom's season one, episode five, War... Producer offers to sell Network 23 exclusive rights to an urban guerrilla group's terrorist activities during a crucial 24-hour global ratings period, sweep period. <laughs> Network 23 declines the offer. Next day, the group blows up an entire city block, but only rival network Breakthrough Television has the coverage. It's good. It's interesting. Um, here's uh, McCain, uh, also on MSNBC. MSNBC was all in. They were. This is all they were talking about. There's no doubt about Jordan. There's no doubt about there's a new uh, king in Saudi Arabia. No doubt. You're going to see a much more active Saudi Arabia involvement, I hope. But right. it still requires American leadership, and that's missing. Ah, American leadership, of course. We need, we need to be the leadership, but we'll let these guys take the blame for anything that happens. I find this to be one of the most important things that's happened in this whole uh, Syria um, conflagration, 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 yeah. conflagration. Yes, you'll get it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think we can just sit back and wait. Just it, it's it's just going to happen. Uh, this is it. They've been well. Waiting. They got to get their ducks in a row first, which means we got to get some money, some checks signed. Well, that's what. And, the, and I noticed this with now that you mentioned it. Uh, and I did have a lot of clips from MSNBC, but Andrea Mitchell had all all coverage of this, yeah, so I can yeah. see this being all in. She's, yeah. of course, a stooge. You know, stooge. Big stooge. <laughs> stooge. Uh, there was one, stooge. and I didn't clip any of these. I mean, I had them clipped, but then I never edited them because they were just, it was, seemed a little dull. But person after person after person kept going on and on, except McCain. Kept going on and on about boots on the ground not happening. No. Uh, in fact, the theme, the meme was this: "Oh, uh, you know, these are the next door neighbors of these countries. Right. Why are we? Why do they want us to get involved? We don't need food on the uh, feet on the ground because, yeah, if it was Mexico or Canada, we it would be important to us. But that's what these people should be thinking: it's their next door neighbors that are having all these problems. They're the ones that should be at boots on the ground, and we can help them." And that's exactly I heard that over and right, over which, which and fits over. in with the entire messaging. It's so perfect. And this will this will be the degrade and ultimately destroy. It's going to take a while. I agree. Someone's going to you know, going to throw up some kind of blockage, whatever. But it sounds like the Armed Service Committee is ready to go. But we have to have another at least one more, maybe two more videos. Outrageous. We have a couple more videos. Cool stuff. Yeah, One, at least two. I was looking at. Uh, uh, Randy Carvin, what's his name? The the former NPR guy who now is at First Look, you know, the tweeter guy. Yeah, what about him? Car- yeah, Carvin. Yeah, so he has he has a he he now Randy. works for uh, Pierre Drive My Car. Oh, does he now? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm but, glad to see he got work. And they do uh, uh, the reported Lee. He's he works. He it's called Reported Lee. The Reported Lee team. Reported dot ly team. So what he has is a bunch of people twittering around, and then they they then I don't know. And they put that on a medium blog or something. And here's, I just thought for a guy who is all in on, you know, tweeting, retweeting, the, the, everything that's done. Well, he's a tweet meister. Everything on the uh, uh, social media is true. So he said, he, he put a post up today. The slideshow begins, a trail of flame traveling across the dirt from right to left, like a scene from the movie where the bad guy or maybe the good guy leaves a thin trail of gas. Da, 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 da. Yet another, the flames consume him, a waxy human wick melting then going up in smoke, there is no way in hell I'm going to share this footage with the public. What the hell? Why not? He said that? Yes, it's in his post. This is verbatim. There is no way in hell. I'm not. I'm going to share this footage with the public. There is no consensus. What, what makes him uh, high and mighty? He can see it, but we can't. Here it comes. There is no consensus on the role graphic imagery should play in journalism. Really? What? He says there's no consensus, all caps, on the role graphic imagery should play in journalism. For some, it is an absolute taboo. For others, a necessary evil to expose the evil in others. For me, 
I've usually come down on the latter side of the argument. Wow. Yeah. Talk about uh, arrogant. Uh Uh-huh. Of course, uh, this is all Rita Katz. We we know that she somehow isn't making this stuff. uh, Rita makes fire from the site uh, intelligence group. Um... Yeah, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Kirby actually had something funny before the, uh, I think this is, um, before all the Jordan stuff cranked up. And Kirby looking a little disheveled. This is Rear Admiral Kirby, who's the spokes hole for the Pentagon. And this guy, he just has funny little phrases that he uses, which I like. Yeah, I, I have a whole series of <laughs> phrases that I want to talk about later. But you might be starting it off for me. I'll, I'm going to try. Ah, let's see. Do we have him here? Hold on. Where's this? Well, that was interesting. A little bit. That was like his mouth exploded. Yeah. How do you think the, the Pentagon, the United States, and the coalition will respond to that killing and to the killing of other hostages? We, we haven't made it a... And I can only speak for the United States military. We haven't made it a point to respond directly to um, these killings. Uh, even when these were um, when the American citizens were killed, oh. uh, I, I don't think the military actually makes decisions. I think they can execute decisions that are made. But okay, what we have done and will continue. To maybe that's changed. Maybe maybe I'm behind. To do is uh, degrade and destroy their capabilities and okay. continue to put them on the defensive, which in which they still remain today. Uh, so there's, uh, I wouldn't, at least from an American military perspective, I wouldn't look at this as a, a you know, it's not a tit for tat. Tit for tat. There we go. A good one from Ad- Rear Admiral Kirby. Tit for tat. Is that a military term? Well, I think the Marines use it a lot. Hmm. Uh, tit for tat. Yeah, that's an old phrase. Well, I got one, too, that's kind of interesting. This is the uh, the clip. You, you, finally discusses- have your, you finally have your list printed out? No, I've got it in front of me on the ah, screen. Okay, it's good. still printing. All right. Um, here's the, here's, I, luckily I kept all these on the one page. If you've noticed a little 38 K 80, the little bitty clips, it may have been triggered by this or not, but this is the a long clip on the ISIS video editor, ah. which is worth listening to and because of what you already said, but let's play that. And then at the very end, there's a, there's a curious usage. Okay. Technical sophistication in, as propagandists of these terrorists. Uh, as you analyze this, how do you go about uh, trying to authenticate these videos? Well, look, there. We know that this came out from from the particular source. Came out from just because of the, the way it was released. But uh, you know, one of the questions is, is who puts together these videos? And what I did think he just say, is, by the way? I'm sorry. The technical source, which in which it was released, and he just babbles about. Right, and this that, is where we're getting a lot of by the way right this is and that's the site intelligence group yeah so right. this guy knows he already knows he knows but if you notice the way he says it he he won't say it no do you, do you want to get killed this is big business <laughs> you don't want to be running around saying hey by the way rita katz does all this shit she's hiring people in hollywood you don't want to say that that is a good way to get whacked. It was released, but, uh, you know, one of the questions is, is... I didn't say it either, by the way. Who puts together these videos? And I think the answer is, is you have to look at this from two different perspectives. One is is that the, the way that technology has evolved, even with a laptop computer these days, if you have the right software, if you have Final Cut Pro or, or similar packages, you know, you don't have to be an entire news team to put together what looks to be Hollywood, Hollywood quality. And, and, in fact, this is what this appears to be. I mean, it's, it got very sophisticated... Special effects in this video. On the other hand, special you effects. Know, it, yeah, well, hold on a second. Yeah, that would what he. The only special effects would be the slow the burning and the slow. Yeah, and the slow motion. A little bit. Of, that's a little bit of special right. effects. But to me, special effects is a little it's higher burning. end than slow motion. Well, just saying special and, effects uh, implies that it's it's special effects. It's not a yeah, real so burn. It's fake. <clears throat> yeah. Who is this guy? He, oh, I can't remember now. He said they, she introduced him at the beginning. He's one of the many CIA guys that oh, okay. come on these shows. All right. All right. Huh, interesting. Okay. Together, what looks to be Hollywood, Hollywood quality. And, and in fact, this is what. And I just have to take exception with what he's saying. No, you can't. If, yeah, you can you have the software, you can have After Effects and all that. This was multiple cameras. This was, this was, someone knew what they were doing. This is not just 
I, I got Final Cut Pro, I could make a movie. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, this was, a, this was a bigger production. This appears to be. I mean, it's, it got very sophisticated special effects in this video. On the other hand, you know, you do have to have some, some talent or some experience. And one of the questions has been, you know, who exactly is behind the scenes doing this on behalf of the Islamic State? Is this just some nobody who happens to have, you know, computer expertise or, or, or familiarity with this? Or is this somebody who, you know, may have once worked in a newsroom, uh, may have once <laughs> produced videos or, or created videos um, and, and has joined ISIS and is now using those, those, those skills to that regard. Uh, yeah, okay. okay well, anyway, yeah, you get the picture. I do. But the thing about this was to the, he said at the very end, to that regard. Yeah. To what that kind re- of usage is this? You're going to say, well, I don't know. I'm going to go to the thing to that regard. Isn't that. Is it what? Tell I've, me what it means. I've always. What does it mean? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a shot. When someone says to that regard in that form, in that spot, in what he's talking about, it sounds to me like he's just confirming that he already knew something and he's explaining it, trying not to let you know that he really already knew and therefore uses to that regard. Yeah. Something well, like that. I think it's just more gobbledygook that we're getting from everybody in the government. And I just looked up uh, the worst case in ours is Josh. Ah, Josh uh, Ernest? Yo, God. <laughs> this guy is I can't. Well, I can't watch him anymore. He's well, here's, painful. Play, play this one. This is a uh, a Josh like. This is John like effort. This is somebody else. But this is another. This is the kind of usages that are getting on my nerves, and I want people to start identifying them as they come out. Play this John like effort. The countries the in the Gulf whom they had hoped might be able to effort the release of this pilot. That's okay. all. The, what is that? Yeah, that's it. That's it. They want to effort the release of the pilot. What kind of sentence is that? Let me hear that. That's interesting. Hold on a second. I want to hear that again. Effort the release? The countries in the Gulf whom they had hoped might be able to effort the release of this pilot. Huh. So they're turning everything into, uh, you know, they're just turning words around. The word effort in, as a noun and a verb. Uh, it's like, why, why are you doing this? To effort the release. This is all government talk. This is all, if you were in one of these agencies. That's that, literally, that had to be something written on the prompter. It's I, That is just written that way because it's CIA talks like that or whoever. In the, yeah, no, Pentagon somebody speak. talks like that and they're writing the stuff. That's the point. You're, now, I, here's another on. interesting use. This is Josh Ernest. And this is the, he uses it, I've never heard anyone use this, and we have to actually could do a little work and look it up and see how it's used, if it even makes sense. Play Josh Commend to. Uh, okay, hold on. One other thing I want to uh, also mention is, uh, I want to commend to your attention a statement from the president's top counterterrorism advisor. Commend. Commend to your attention. I want to commend to your attention. That's weird. What kind of what kind of English is this? It, it's a. Um, I would say it could also be uh, legalese. They're getting real careful about how they speak. That's that's what I would think. To praise formally or officially. That's not what they, he's using it he's as using entrust it. someone or something to. I want to commend them this to your attention. I want to entrust you. It's bull crap. Entrust some. He yeah, wants uh, you to read something. I could, instead of saying, I would like you to read this, he says, I'd like to commend to your attention. Ah, uh, which is wink, wink, nudge, nudge, this is the truth? No, it's mm. just, it, it's it, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I'm an idiot. <laughs> he says it again. Try the second clip of him saying commend. Uh, I would certainly commend to your attention the statement from... Man. Okay, well, I guess this is the same clip. No, okay, no, here's no, another no, no. It was it, different? Yeah, yeah different. command, I want to command. Yeah, well, we'll do the two clips here, the first one. <laughs> One other thing I want to uh, also mention is uh, I want to commend to your attention a statement from the president's top counterterrorism advisor. Clip two. Uh, I would certainly commend to your attention the statement okay. from. That is okay, kind of That's different because it's certainly in the same yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he uses, okay, he does that. So now he does this one. This is the next one. Josh Disdain. Now, how does that, how's this usage fit into the scheme of things? Why do reporters put up with this? Uh, and we're going to continue to stand with them uh, even in this very difficult, tragic time. Did he just say disdain? With them. We're going to disdain with them. Did he say disdain or disdain? I think he said disdain. <laughs> or disdain. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, listen again. Hold on a second. <laughs> this is, oh, man. 
What are you doing? This is crazy stuff. We need to work on this. And we're going to continue to stand with them, uh, even in this very difficult, tragic time. Now, why doesn't somebody go, what the hell are you talking about? They don't want to seem stupid. I don't know. Here's let's go on with some of this crap. I'm just looking up disdain. I, I looked up this guy, by the way, just to say. So he is he's most of these like uh, Carney was a editor of the of a, of the, a, a of publication. Time. Yeah, of a the mainstream so he's publication. Slouch and he knows how to you know, reporters he speaks yeah. English. Yeah. This guy is a political science grad from some university after going to would look like a, it's actually a girls school mm. that uh was a private school and he went to the, so then he got a political science degree and has worked in the government ever since he's never been a reporter or an editor or anything. So he speaks like one of the, like an idiot bureaucrat. It doesn't have a good command of the English language and it's getting on my nerves. That's probably one of the reasons you don't like listening to him. Yeah. Let's yeah. play a uh, Josh informed by experts. Okay. Uh, this is a process that's been informed by experts. This is a process <laughs> that's, that's been, been informed so by the pro- experts. The process what has been, does that mean? Uh, okay. This now removes any culpability from any person because the process was informed by experts, not the people creating the process. No, the process is its own entity. This is legalese, John. This is they're getting ready and nobody wants to be holding the burning, you know, the burning stick or no, whatever it is. No, uh, this is you're reading too much into this. Okay. This guy is a right. moron. Right. That's the problem. And he's using these words. I've seen it. I worked for the government. I've seen these guys go on and on and on and say nothing and using mm-hmm. this cop talk. Cops speak like this. You know, they have it's, it's like they're when they're testifying, but not even in if you meet with them, they speak like this. It's just the way they talk all the time. It's not like they turn it on and off, and this guy, I believe, talks like this all the time. Here's a, another little annoyance that I really have always hated this. And this, start, I haven't heard it for a while, uh, although I think it was sneaking into Carney's language. I think he may have quit because of this, because he starts to see himself speaking like this. Play the, jo- the Josh put forward. Josh put forward. Uh, she made reference to the fact that the office of uh, the office of the director of national intelligence put forward a report today. <laughs> yeah. Did he submit a report? <laughs> no, I put it forward. <laughs> yeah. No, I did agree. he take it on his desk and move it a little bit forward? Yeah. Is that what he did? Put yeah. forward. He put it forward. <laughs> okay. You're, Does he put it forward? Now you're nitpicking. <laughs> you hate this guy. I'm not nitpicking. This is this is what we have to endure. This kind of thing. We he's not even saying anything. This doesn't mean anything. And the, uh, hello, the White House is going to turn into a bunch of bullshit artists. Uh-huh. Oh wait a minute. What am I thinking? Okay, we can cancel this segment. They already are bullshit artists. <laughs> In all your years on Mother Earth, have you ever seen such bullshit in the White House? <laughs> Actually, no. No, right? It's sad. Especially with that Jared woman. She was sitting right next to Obama as he's going on and about the v- health. Oh, VJ44? VJ44? That's, 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 her, that's her Twitter handle. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. VJ so I have one other thing with, with Josh. We just want to play it. Yeah. I'm noticing that he has, there's a certain style of his speech, which I'm going to document because I've got a couple of examples of it. Of a, of a, I call it like half up talking. Mm. Where you kind of and everybody speaks this way. Uh, Susan Power, uh, Susan was it? Susan Rice speaks this way. Samantha Power not so much, but uh, Jared speaks this way. And there's other people that have worked in the uh, Oval Office amongst the staff there. They speak this way. They, we they, need to kill like them. Like this, no. we need to <laughs> kill them. Okay, they would, that's strictly Fox. All right. So play the Josh EPA climate and up talking. What the last word he says is up talked. But it's not, it's, it's a certain kind of Chicago up talk. It's the uh, only way to describe it. And it's, I'm hearing it more and more and more. And it's, it's, I hope it doesn't affect the way people speak to each other, but it's terrible. One more and final topic. The EPA uh, weighed in with this assessment of the Keystone Pipeline today saying that it would indeed have effects on climate change. Doesn't this basically show that the president's test on whether or not to approve Keystone is, will, not be, will not be fulfilled? Well, I, I did see the letter that was that, that the EPA put out today. Uh, I'm not going to comment you know, on this process, or at least the substance of this process, uh, until the State Department has concluded their uh, broader review about to determine whether or not the, this project going forward is in the national interest. So certainly the president 
president has laid out his own clear criteria about how he believes the project should be evaluated. And uh, as a part of the process of collecting input from relevant agencies across the federal government, the EPA put out their own uh, supplemental environment in, environmental impact study. I've noticed this, and I, I think study. Yes, I think. Um, this is whenever he, he or anyone else, for that matter, in a briefing is reading from the tabs, is reading from the documents, and they're trying to make it flow like they're just speaking, but no, they're kidding nobody. I think that's where the um, where the up talk, this half up talking comes comes in because they're trying to be they're really trying to read verbatim because it's all it has. To uh, be. That's that would explain it, but I it, it's I've noticed this cadence from other people. Right. He's just doing it to annoy you. Well, I'm getting annoyed. Did, I, did we play the chart of path forward? Uh, no, no, no. I'll play that too. Chart of path forward. I don't think so. Let's see. We'll help chart a path forward. <laughs> yeah. That's a statement that's written by somebody. We'll chart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it is. <laughs> written. We'll chart a path, a path forward. forward. Yes. What does that even mean? We're, we're going to get. We're going to bring a map maker yes. in. Yeah, we're going to get a quill and some ink. And we're going to chart, we're going to get a sextant, and we're going to chart our path forward right into Assad's living room. Yeah. Let me, are you uh, done with Josh? I will go on with this, but I'm just telling you, I'm on the lookout. Oh, good. This guy's got to go. <laughs> oh, he will. Don't worry. Uh, back to McCain. Uh, of course, we had this, the hearings, the senatorial hearings for the confirmation of Ashton Carter. Uh, uh, as the replacement for Chuck holy Hagel. Crap. When he comes out, he looks a hang dog. Yeah. He looks like a bureaucrat loser. Well, he's a shill. He's there to do whatever he's told to do, which was the problem with Hagel, as Hagel was, you know, annoying. And he thought for himself a little bit. And for people he, who were going to get killed. He still had a hang dog look, too. <laughs> well, he got beaten down into submission. <clears throat> That's why. He got beaten. They said, look, you're resigning. He's going to really kill you or something. He, 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 the guy, it's, he's sad. Uh, McCain and uh, Ashton Carter. Uh, I I think the this is on the strategy for uh, right. ISIS, this is the ISIS, good clip. Yeah, ISIS, ISIL, IS advertising. Uh, I I think the um, uh, uh, a, a strategy connects ends and means, and our ends with respect to uh, ISIL needs to be its lasting defeat. Uh, I say lasting because it's important that when they get defeated, they stay defeated. Uh, and uh, that is why it's important that uh, we have uh, 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 those on the ground there who will ensure that they stay defeated once defeated. Uh, it's a different on the two sides of the border. <laughs> this guy is so funny. He knows he's charted the path forward. He knows what's going on. We need oh, yeah, yeah. we need Jordanians to be uh, there on the ground, but we're going to uh, you know be uh, forward, advising. Chart, we'll be yeah. advising. It's one enemy, uh, but it's two different contexts, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is very Iraq. This is very important. What he's saying here: two one enemy, two different contexts. Now Iraq. We, we've, we've got that covered. We got that taken care of. We're good to go. The only other piece he's going to say uh, Syria, but he means Assad. Just listen and think Assad. Two different contexts, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in Iraq, the force that will keep them defeated is the Iraqi security forces. That's the, our strategy: is to strengthen them and to make them that force. On the Syrian side, not to take too long it, uh, about it, uh, we are trying to build the force that will. Uh, keep them defeated, and that's going to be a combination of moderate Syrian forces and regional forces. Okay, let's just deconstruct that. Moderate Syrian forces, which is just such a contradiction in war terms, and then regional forces, which is uh, Jordanians. Well, it sounds like it doesn't sound like a strategy to me, uh, <laughs> but maybe Thanks, we John. can flesh out your goals. Did he yeah. say thanks, John? No, I said thanks, John. Oh, I said thanks, please. John. <laughs> I'm thanking Mr. McCain. Uh, we're on a first name basis. Um, so this may not take very long. I don't know. It could take months and months, but I think you know, depending on what happens in this armed services committee and whatever power they have, what can a committee do? Can a committee just say, let's do something now? Can they make no, decisions? They can't do like anything. That? They they're, they have these committees so that when the session of Congress meets and they're, or they're writing up a bill, 
the committee comes in and says, no, this is no good. You can't do it this way. Mm-hmm. They're like oversight. It's like oversight of, of whatever they're investigating and the bill making process. Right. So if the armed forces committee says no to the, like something like some funding, it just never gets anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, won't, won't come out of committee. Right. Well, I'm a lot pretty of these sure. bills, when they write a bill, a lot of them go into the committee. So the committee talks about the bill and then they can kill it or vote on it or whatever and send it back. Well, for sure, if this doesn't do it, if this does, isn't enough, if they don't feel this is enough for some kind of additional action, because we already have thousands of troops, again, in, in Jordan, um, it's about money. Money has to be sent. Money must be sent. That's the bottom line. That is, of course, also so that we can sell some, some stuff, you know, military industrial complex stuff. So we, we gotta, Whoa, hello? That, oh. And these guys have threatened all the pilots. Yeah, the they pilots are like, oh, it's a credit roll at the end. Yeah, like, <laughs> I saw it. But I don't want to fly anymore. They're threatening me. This I don't think crazy. the pilots will react that way. But no. <clears throat> but the uh, the countries may have to upgrade mm-hmm. their equipment. Yes. To, so they avoid getting shot down. Yes. You don't want your guys shot down. So upgrades are not cheap. Well, we need two things. <clears throat> we need an, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we need a no-fly zone. That's the, we need a limited no-fly zone. I think this is the next step. The United Nations Security Council. This is how we did it with Libya. This is how it works. We get a no-fly zone. Once we have the no-fly zone, then we're moving forward. So this may be the strategy with this particular video to get the no-fly zone. Well, the no-fly zone, if that actually happens, would indicate that it has to do with Syria more than anybody else. You're yes. right, because there's yeah. the ISIS people, I hate to remind everyone, have no airplanes. And they can't fly one if they did. They got no ships. Don't All they got is Toyotas. <laughs> Don't they have magical flying Toyotas? <laughs> magical Toyotas. <laughs> oh, which reminds me. Just as a little intermezzo. Um, you remember the, the, the magical shape, 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 shape-shifting Jews? Yeah, a tongue twister if ever there was. Yes. The magical shape-shifting Jews um, that uh, are now apparently being blamed for the uh, attacks uh, in uh, France. We have listeners. Yes. It, where? We mean? have listeners that, are, according to the listener, uh, is a shape-shifting Jew. Right. Well, Secret Agent Paul, who is responsible for many a good song and jingle on this program, has once again proved to us why we are the best podcast in the universe. <laughs> I tell you, no other program anywhere, and probably no other podcast, would ever have that for you. No, and that means uh, <laughs> Dvorak.org slash NA, just a reminder. Oh, man. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. <laughs> it is funny. The, the best thing is, Jews who listen to our show love this whole shape-shifting Jew thing. They think it's funny. Yeah, well, they do, and yeah. they probably uh, will wish well, it were true. <laughs> they will probably want this clip. Yeah, it was Sir yeah. Jono of the shape shifting Jews. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, from that intermezzo, I uh, would like to propose that uh, I thank you for your courage and say, in the morning to you, John C. Dvorak. Well, in the morning to you, Adam Curry, and also. In the morning, to all the ships at sea, boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water, and all the dames and knights out there. In the morning to everybody in the chat room, noagendastream.com. Good to see you all lined up, ready to go. In the morning to our artists, who are always uh, producing just fantastic work. Martin JJ came back hard uh, with the artwork for episode six. Slamming it. <laughs> Slamming it. But again, good art, some great stuff being made. Um, no agenda art generator.com really appreciate the work, obviously. I thank you, Martin JJ. Back on the docket, back on the stick. You know, I always wonder why, you know, when you get the spreadsheet, mm-hmm. it's never at the top, it's always down a few cells, you know, when it opens. Uh, well, interestingly, I opened the spreadsheet in the OS 10 preview app. 
And? Which is, I thought it was just a PDF viewer, but it can also view and, and understand how to open Oh, you know, that thing views a lot of stuff. It's actually a pretty good product. It's a great product. They should have an equivalent for Windows machines. And so it just opens, and I can't really do much. Can I? No, I can't. Yeah, I can't change cells or anything, but it's just like one page, and it, no, it starts at the top for me, so I don't have this issue. Oh, well, okay, then you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. No. Uh, let's see. We have we got a few uh, donors that came in big. Ryan Benson in Tampa, Florida, $600, and he wants to thank you for the show and what you provide every week, twice. Mm -hmm. This donation should make me a knight, and I wish to become knight of the Tesla coil, (laughs) as I'm both fascinated by the man, Tesla, the technology, and much to your chagrin, his money comes from winnings, much to your chagrin, oh, chagrin, this money comes from winnings uh, on Tesla stock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that was That's actually fine. a good investment for a while. It comes and goes. It goes down. It goes I'm up. I'm good with that. I'm <laughs> only, uh, I only ask for job karma. Job, job, job. It's a more mm-hmm. important karma for Adam in his difficult time. Mm-hmm. And a chef's choice of whatever jingles JCD wants. This is, uh, this is not a you're, good. The, you gents are the singular light in the uh, dark sea of manipulation and propaganda. You're worthy of every penny and more. My only regret is I'm not independently wealthy and able to put millions in your funds to keep you running as long as you want to. If you put millions in my funds, I'll be quitting and running away <laughs> no, to an you island. Put, and you are too much of a, of a neat freak fanatic when it comes I'd, I'd to this be, news. I'd be, just, yeah. just know, you'd be neat with the money. It'd be a nice pile. Just know that uh, for me, there are probably thousands who rely on your intelligence and independence for their daily sanity. We get a lot of checks, not just from the anonymous lesbians who, are, who I first noticed it from. Mm-hmm. That has in the little note on the check it yeah. says "sanity." Look really? At one today, I think nuttings me. Is, is that is that just something written on, or is that a? Yeah, it's written on. They write "sanity" in the little note. Oh, in the little memo part. Yeah. So what was this for? And you write "sanity." Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Although when I had um, when I was doing some you know therapy, uh, I would write on the check all kinds of stuff like blowjobs, fun. You know, <laughs> just see if anyone noticed it. Yeah, with people I noticed. Anyway, so much respect finally to Sir Ryan of the Tesla coil. So he needs a couple of things. And I I, I, I think, uh, what could I come up with? Do you guys have anything you want to uh, drink that we haven't played for a long time? Uh, let's play the, the, the self-esteem clip where there no, there's no winning. Oh, uh, that's uh, tell a secret is, uh, is that. Okay, that's uh, all right. And I'll do, um, I'll do a, uh, a dude named Ben, a new one from Matthew Frost, dude named Ben, and then we'll give him the jobs card. Oh, there's no winning. We don't like to foster a competitive atmosphere, but we laugh a lot. Now everyone hug and share a secret. Everyone's crazy about a dude named Ben. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote. Jobs, you've got karma. <laughs> Telling you, best podcast and, in the universe. And next from Hilo, Hawaii, <laughs> Sir Dennis Nutting. I don't know. He sent a note in. He, uh, he came up with four hundred dollars, and he became baronet. Nice. And he says, "Hello again, uh, my podcasting pals, Adam and uh, Adam. I am very sorry to hear of your troubles. Hang in there." We men of many wives feel your pain. Mm-hmm. That looks like job karma is working for me. Therefore, find it and close the check for four hundred dollars and three cents. Oh, I forgot to put the three cents. No, it said four hundred dollars, uh, which takes me to double knighthood and whatever rank that entitles me to. If I may have a name, I'd like of the Spam Sandwich Islands Isles <laughs> Isles of the, the Sir Dennis Nutting of the Spam sure. Sandwich Isles. I think three hours of show is not long enough. Mm. I usually listen twice. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. Uh, give him another karma and it will be. Absolutely. You've got karma. Hey. Uh, Greg Davis in Austin, Texas. 33333. Please wish me karma to get sales consulting work at. Greg Davidson Consulting. No, oh, no, Greg, Greg Davis Consulting. Greg com. Davis Consulting dot com. And let Sir Gene know I have been de douched, <laughs> followed by a de douching and kid. Okay. He wants a de douching, I guess, followed by, or, or what is this? Even yeah, he mean? wants a kid boom shakalaka. <clears throat> and, uh, and OMG, that was so amazing. Okay. Yeah, and I'll throw in a karma just because he deserves it. You've been de-douched. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. Oh my God, that is amazing. 
You've got karma. There you go. Nailed that. Donna. 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 Hatton. Donna. 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 Oh, Donna. May Newth uh, County killed there, Ireland, 33333. 33. ITM gentlemen, this donation is long overdue as I intended to donate once I began my slave job at a future drone-based online retailer a few months ago. Hearing the generous donations coming from my Irish countrymen in recent episodes finally provided me the guilt sauce I needed to round out my shame sandwich and force me to donate. (laughs) However, I have paid a price for my sluggish pace thanks to the recent poor performance of the euro against the dollar. Yes, you would have gotten uh, more no bang for your buck <clears throat> earlier. Yep, yep, yep. My salary in U.S. dollars has gone down 25% since I started work. And to add to the karmic retribution, I now have to fork over more slave chits to make an equivalent donation. <laughs> the, the lesson is clear. The chits. <laughs> no agenda. Karma works both ways. Can I get some finishing this damn PhD karma? Yeah. A- and it's a real times three tastefully uh-huh. followed by an OMG. That's amazing. Da- ah, there's your yeah. random number again. Yeah, it, is. <clears throat> it happens every Blue single row. time. All right, all right. Uh, it's real. It- I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, keep it good works. Jance. You're helping all of us. Keep hold of a little sliver of sanity in this world. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. It's real. It's real. It's real. Oh, my God. That is amazing. You've got karma. Yay. A uh, Jacobus Boersma. Jacobus yeah. Boersma. Yeah. That's a Dutch name, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, New York at 33333. Longtime listener. First time donator. I really appreciate what you have been doing all these years and look forward to the next pipeline pipeline like meta analysis. <laughs> uh, keep going strong. Adam would like to hear you properly pronounce my name in Dutch. Jacobus Boersma. <clears throat> John, the American pronunciation is Jacobus Boersma. <laughs> Bingo. Right, you both. Sounded the same to me. Uh, karma. Yes, we'll take the karma. Thank you very much. You've got karma. Thank you, Jacobus. Paul J. Sinkowski in Winooski, Vermont, three thirty-three thirty-three. Uh, short note, ITM gentleman, Sir Paul of Winooski, responding to the douchebag check. <laughs> Perfect. That is all. Thank, Sir thank Paul. you. Thank Sir. you, Sir Paul. Uh, not douche, douche, douchebag check. Yeah, Anonymous sure. in Odenton, Maryland, two fifty. Uh, I have not lost interest in the show. Please keep it going. <laughs> Anonymous is that guy, apparently. That guy. It's actually that guy. Yeah. Aaron Yoho in Morgantown, West Virginia. $214 years. Or we have a, a three, four, five of, uh, of the double producership, associate ah, producership. Yes. yes. Uh, Valentine's Day donations. Great show so far in 2015. Sorry, I haven't donated recently. Got laid off last year. Now running my own business, healthcarelitigation.com. <laughs> healthcarelitigation.com. I've been tough. It's been tough, but your show and the, those hos, hosers at Grimerica.com have made it easier. Please wish my wife, Lena, a happy Valentine's Day, even though it's a fake holiday. I couldn't pass up the double producership. Please give me some techno twit dude named Ben SEO optimization Twitter karma in hopes that I can be successful enough to hit knighthood this year. And his thing is, his Twitter handle is HLS underline experts. <laughs> Don't block me, bro. I didn't actually interact directly with people in the IT arena. Somebody whose name was in, in, in Tech. Gibson's nuts. I can't even remember his last name. I think his first name may have been Ben. All right. Dude named Ben. Dude named Ben. You've got karma. There you go. All right, onward. Uh Baroness Monica Lansing. Hey. Oh, those are, I actually missed a couple. Hold on. I Bar- jumped, uh, you did. Jumped a page. You missed... Uh... I missed a bunch. Yep. Start with Steve Edwards. Yep. It's somewhere Ohio. 214. It's not too much trouble. I'd like to split the double credit with the love of my life, my best friend, and my wife, Nettie Edwards. I'm not sure what she sees in me, <laughs> but I'm glad she sticks with me. Aw, so nice. Yeah. Brian Vaughn, 214 in San Carlos. Do we have a note from him? Let me check. 
because I didn't. S- it could be. I mean, there's a couple of notes. But how about your system? You had the system where you have the pile of checks and it's all in order, and that you get the top. No, no, one no. And- this is. The, I'm saying, do we have an email? I meant. Oh, okay, sorry. And no, we don't. No, we don't. All right. For some reason. And no, this didn't come in as check. This came through PayPal. Baroness Monica, Brian, Bar- you got something. Baronettes. 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 <laughs> Uh, Monica Lansing, Drayton Valley, Alberta, Canada, 214. This donation is is in honor, honor of my sweetie. Uh, maybe it's honor. 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 Uh, honor of my sweetie, Hal. We will be celebrating our 14th anniversary, February 19th. So this is a combo Valentine anniversary donation. Love karma to all. Baronettes Monica Lansing of Pembina Valley. Oh, where how, it's how cold right now. That is so sweet. David Hutchinson in Conifer, Colorado, which means tree, $214. John and Adam, please accept this attached Valentine's Day donation to give Kathy Hutchinson of Conifer, Colorado, a special Valentine's Day producership on the show. So she gets this one. She's my longtime suffering spouse and recent list. Oh, the other one was divided, so they're going to get Okay, this is going to get sort of writing notes down. She's my longtime suffering spouse and a recent listener to the No Agenda show. We both love the deconstructions, which is absolutely superb, and now find ourselves laughing hysterically at the media reports as they roll in. Instead of succumbing to the terror model of today's media, government, and leadership, we sit in a hot tub through <laughs> hot tub. A hot, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> a hot t- and hot laugh t- our asses off. We hey, sit, send like pictures. Hot knife through butter. Send pain. pictures. Can't think of anybody I'd rather spend time with than my wife as we sit in the hot hmm. tub watching the snow <laughs> come down and listening to the best podcast deconstruction, media deconstruction out there. Please play her favorite Judge Janine clip, kill them, and bomb them, and follow it up with some house-selling karma for me as I'm trying to sell my Scottsdale, Arizona house. 88 to my lovely wife, 73 to you and Adam, and 73 to the Gitmo Nation, 73 to N5XL, Conifer, Colorado. It's funny because uh, we make this show in the hot tub, actually. We need to kill them. We need to kill them. Bomb them, bomb them, and bomb them again. You've got karma. Yeah, we love Judge Janine. She's she's not a warmonger. No, no, no. She's a peaceful woman. She and McCain should get together. All right. So now we got a note that came in on email. I'll have to read Mm -hmm. from John Donovan. Did I? Yeah, John Donovan in San Jose. He's a baron of Silicon Valley, Sir John. 214, and there's another uh, Valentine's Day double deal, double dip. Uh, should have seen this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It was great to see the... What is he saying here? Okay. Oh, all right. Now, didn't we get him in on the last one? He snuck in. I don't know, John. I don't remember. I, I just produced this Anyway, show. John, should have seen this and taken your advice. Thanks for the reading. And though I still want to hear you do a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday announcement some Sunday, <laughs> like motorsports radio, like motorsports radio spots used to be. It was great to see the great response you guys had. And uh, yeah, we, he's been well he prepared. Credit. Well done. Well done. He got credited the last time. And we, <laughs> oh, OK. But he had another note. All right. So you, it's one of these days you have to do a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday thing. All right, all right. Two more. Francine Hardaway. Hey, Dame Francine. Dame Francine, Francine yeah. Half Moon Bay. She's not in Half Moon Bay. Still says that. And she's, I asked her about this. Uh-huh. She says, no, nah, it's PayPal. You can't change her address. $200. I'm home from Gitmo, Maharashtra. That's right. She was in, in, <clears throat> she was in India. India. Yeah. Where I listened avidly to the show for two weeks and caught Adam's transition. He should use this <laughs> I'm, like I'm in transition. His current equivalent is of hookers and blow. <laughs> $100? dollars i not going to get me very far. It's 200. Well, you get the other half. It's not like... Ah, this is true. Yeah. Armando Guerra. However, if we pooled our resources... Hmm. Armando. I miss Armando. This is the mailman from... Uh, yeah, Armando. From, where's <clears throat> his email? I didn't get one. I don't, he just, I don't think he sent an email. I think he just donated. This is the, the mail carrier. Yeah, your old the buddy. The old guy over in uh, must still be listening <clears throat> Travis show. Heights. Of course he listens. Is it Armando? I mean, I'm putting it in the search. Armando. Armando Guerra. Yeah. Uh, Armando, he works... He walks 10 hours a day. But he would like, like a, a much longer show, I'm sure. And these guys walk a lot. Not, not all of them. He does. He's got Some a them have little carts, little cars they give him. Anyway, mm-hmm. that concludes our uh, executive and associate executive producers for a show, uh, whatever it's show. Six, what's nine, show? Or three. Six, six, nine or three. Six, nine or three. 
And <clears throat> I want to remind people that we do have another show coming up uh, Sunday. Sunday, mm-hmm. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I uh, do have a quick PR mention here. Dvorak.org slash NA. Now that, as well as the new No Agenda CD is out. Oh, good. This is Ramsey Kane. Um, so you can download MP3s in a zip archive, download the label, you can burn and distribute discs. Uh, this new edition is titled, uh, what is it titled here? This Week in Syria. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so we really appreciate uh, what Ramsey does. It really helps. Uh, and uh, you can use these to, obviously, uh, promote the program and uh, help get us uh, new producers and uh, keep us going. Everyone should send these discs to the Koch brothers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. Koch brothers! Yeah, they should totally be hooking us up. Indeed, please support us for the Sunday show. Dvorak.org slash N. And thank you all very much for your support to our execs and associate executive producers. You need to propagate the formula. Our formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. You know, I find the relationship between the left wingers in this country and the Koch brothers rather, I'll use this word, abhorrent. The Koch brothers began as anti Vietnam War activists. Hmm. And then they became, they evolved into modern libertarians, and they're very libertarian in their views on everything. Mm-hmm. In fact, almost checklist libertarian. And they started the Cato Institute and the Heritage and all these, a lot of these groups were started by them. I don't know how active they are. But it seems to me that their background is is right, should be pretty much right in line with the, the progressives. But it, it, but just, I think it's just because they're connected to a private corporation that has... Yeah. Oil. That's that oil, yeah. This, yeah. this is that bad. They're bad automatically. Which, uh, and they make diapers. Oh, God, which no. are Which are made from oil. Well, well some right? not. Yeah, of course. Plastic. It's plastics. Hello. It's, it's petroleum products. That's what I should. That would be more correct. Well. <clears throat> well, so this, uh, there's three main things that I see going on. Actually, we need to take a little break, John. We do have a brand new month. We have presidential proclamations. I'm all ears. There we go. It is, uh, by proclamation, it is American Heart Month. Which, um, let's see, anything special? Ah, oh, of course, we had the National Wear Red Day, February 6th. We missed that. Oh, uh, no. Somehow, yeah, we missed that one. <clears throat> then it is, uh, let's see. Oh, um, why would they have a Wear Red Day? To uh, commemorate... And to recognize the heart. It's stupid. So moral self-licensing. Ah, by war red, I'm done. I don't have to help out. Everybody feels good. Change my Twitter icon. Bingo, boom, shakalaka, good to go. Uh, and, uh, and hello, uh, African Americans. You get to share your history with American Heart Month, which I think is a slam down. African American history should, be, uh, should have its own month. We shouldn't have to share anything. <sighs> but there it is. That was it? Uh, no. For generations, the story of American progress has been shaped by the inextinguishable beliefs that change is always possible and a brighter future lies ahead. With tremendous strength and abiding resolve, our ancestors, some of who were brought to this land in chains, have woven their... Resi- oh, i got to read this better. Have woven their resilient dignity into the fabric of our nation... And taught us that we are not trapped by the mistakes of history. It was these truths that found expression as foot soldiers and freedom riders sat in and stood up, marched and agitated for justice and equality. This audacious movement gave birth to a new era of civil and voting rights. And slowly, we renewed our commitment to an ideal at the heart of our founding. No matter who you are, what you look like, how modest your beginnings or the circumstances of your birth, Kenya... You deserve every opportunity to achieve your God-given potential. Ah, we slipped God in there. Good. And then finally, if that wasn't enough, it is National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. I didn't know. (laughs) this This is a new one. 
National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. Wow. <laughs> Uh, there's a website, loveisrespect.org. Yeah. Or vetoviolence.cdc.gov. All right, kids. Your president says... What's it got to do with the CDC? It's a health, uh, it's a health uh, crisis. Well, they go to the public health... Uh, well, the abuse. Department of Health. Uh, mm, I don't know. CDC sets the standard for what constitutes everything. So, shouldn't. Yeah, well, it's how it works. I don't make it up. Uh, so this, so it took me a little while to figure this one out. It was very, very annoying. It's been going on for a week or two, and all of a sudden, it just exploded. This uh, this vaccine uh, issue. It started with the Disneyland thing. That's where uh, you saw it first. We played clips. Uh, was it yeah, now? I got a clip ago. here for you uh, for this topic that you're going to discuss, which is Josh on measles. We got Josh's back. I would love to. Uh, let me lead into Josh on measles. Um, so I'm seeing the story after story after story, and it turns into the story about uh, uh, anti-vaxxing, and it turns into uh, maybe making uh, vaccines mandatory. So it's and every it's just it's it's exploding on the scene. So I I have an insider now. I uh, I called Nurse Tracy, and she helped me figure because I'm like, is there is is this, is there some measles thing? Is it really really all that bad? Is this an epidemic? Are the people in the hospitals freaking out? I said no. Okay, let's hear Josh. I to speak to the president about this issue shortly before the briefing. Uh, and he was clear that we don't need a new law. We need people to exercise common sense. So the federal government does not need to establish a mandate for vaccines, just recommendations I, and advice to states and parents on the what side. What the president is saying, we shouldn't have to. That the science is clear, uh, and it is science. it is irresponsible for people to not get their children vaccinated, mm-hmm. not only because it puts their children at risk of getting the measles, uh, it also puts at risk uh, the uh, children, other children in their community, if it's infants who are t- too young to get the vaccine, uh, or children who have compromised uh, immune systems that they can't get the, the vaccine. So uh, people de- need to take responsibility, not just for their kids, but for the kids in their community. No. All right. Let me make one thing absolutely clear to everyone within the sound of my voice. The politicians talking about vaccinations and measles do not give one shit about you or your kids. Not an iota. This is a full scale attack. It's interesting because I, I think this is something that backfired. This is all about the 2016 election. This is only to make Republicans look kooky. Make them look super, super, super kooky. Here's an example. We start with CBS. Interesting to hear the debate in the Republican Party. You had most top Republican lawmakers saying yesterday, and very clearly from Senator Rubio, that vaccines work. They protect children. There's no evidence that it causes um, autism. And then you have Senator Rand Paul saying first on CNBC that he's seen it cause mental disorders in children, and then he has backtracked that statement. What's going on in the party? But you have the Wall Street Journal, which you write for now, really taking on Chris Christie's comments yesterday, today taking on Rand Paul, calling this the weird science of Mr. Paul and Christie's and their lack of information. Are you surprised, Peggy, that measles and vaccinations are part of the political conversation, number one? And number two, does it damage anybody's chances? Are you surprised? Ah, So this uh, this could, first of all, Rand Paul, they kookified him. He's out. He can never run for president again. This is going to haunt him. Where this everyone? Oh, Rubio. Well, I'm not going to disagree with this, but I, I this is not my interpretation of what's going on. Can I finish? finish. Yep. This has been politicized. This is Ben Carson now. Uh, this is CNN. Guys, now you see a couple. Who's the of only your smart guy running? Potential opponents coming out, and it seems as though the Republican Party has a problem with science. That they're always <laughs> pushing back against science. And here, once again, Rand Paul. Uh, he says vaccines are good, but he's pushing back as if the government should be making all these decisions. Chris Christie, sure, he corrected his statement as well as Rand Paul, but he was pushing back that it shouldn't be all about the government. Do you think that is why? or is it pandering? Well, first of all, I have to challenge the the premise of your question because in California, the majority of the uh, cases are coming from uh, Democratic strongholds. So I'm not sure that I would characterize it as a problem with one party or the other. But I would characterize it as a problem of lack of information about uh, 
you know, Martin studies. I'm not saying that Republicans are getting sick more. I'm saying that they're talking about the sickness more in ways that may not be productive. For example, what you say about, well, maybe people being introduced, that sounds like code for code. illegal immigration uh, to me. Is that a point you're trying to make? Are you trying to make the measles situation not, into an immigration it's argument? Not, it's, it's not code. And I'm not trying to make it into any particular argument. I'm stating what the facts are. The facts are that there are people in our country right. who have become lax in terms mm -hmm. of uh, their vigilance for getting their kids immunized. And we have people coming in who are not necessarily being properly screened. That's this is where it got interesting. I have one more clip and then I want to hear your take on this. B Carson here, um, who is a, a, a medical uh, professional, alludes to this being a California liberal type thing. And then I caught this uh, Don Lemon with uh, Frank Bruni, who uh, writes for the New York Times. <laughs> and uh, this is why I don't understand if this, who set this up, who or what opportunists came in to take over this and, and elevate this to make, I think so far it's making the Republicans look loony. But really, if you listen to Lemon and uh, Bruni, who are totally on the left side, They'll say that it's uh, uh, the, the natural people, i.e., you know, Berkeley, <laughs> Berkeley type folk. You write about this in, in an op-ed. It's called the vaccine lunacy. OK, you said, but what's in play is more than one uh, one affliction, right? Uh, one affliction's resurgence. The size and the sway of the anti-vaccine movement reflect a chilling disregard for science or at least a pick and choose uh, cafeteria approach to it. That's also evident, for example, in many Americans' refusal to recognize climate change. You, you think that these are the sort of natural people who are promoting this, and really people of privilege who are promoting this? Most well, yeah, it, you mentioned those issues. Interestingly, I think a lot of the anti-vaccine people probably would hate to hear themselves lumped in with the climate change deniers. But they're doing the same thing from different places on the political spectrum. They're basically saying, when my gut or when what I want to believe is different from science, I'm going to go with my gut and what I want to believe over science. Yeah. Um, and I think it happens across the spectrum of issues. Um, I think it's a problem. Why are we seeing so many parents, especially parents, when you, think of the, when you think of the natural crowd, wouldn't you think that these are more learned people? Maybe I'm wrong. Learned. Some of them are, yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, I think learned is a term learned. that can work in a lot of ways. They may Church be packed goer. full of a lot of information. <laughs> they may not be that bright about the way they process it. But yeah. you use the phrase all natural, and a lot of these people are the all natural crowd. Uh -huh. If they really want to live all natural. Are, are, are they getting dentistry for their kids? Are they getting orthodonture? I mean, all natural, when we lived all natural, you go back far enough, we were dying at 30 and 40. I don't think we really want to live all natural. Well, that's good. Well, here's what's going on the way I see it. In fact, I get the biggest kick out of these local stores because all our news channels have, oh, a measles case mm -hmm. is found in Marin County. I had a clip actually a couple shows ago for this because my comment about that is that when I was a kid, they didn't have a measles vaccine. Everybody got the measles, and it wasn't a news story. Right. Would have, John got the measles. Measles. So they bring up this measles. They they make a mountain out of a molehill. Your friend Tracy says the same thing. It keeps it stays in the news. It's focused on measles, and then it gets picked up by the political stations, which have to make everything political. They blame it on the Republicans. The Republicans stupidly get involved, and that keeps the whole thing in the news. And what it, uh, since we're talking about vaccines. And we're talking about science and all the rest of what one little fact is left out of all this as it, as it boils and boils and the Republicans are now involved and now there was backtracking. That's bullcrap. That just happened by accident. This was a concerted effort by the pharmaceutical companies to to distract as a distraction of the week because they're the ones with the money that can promote these kinds of things and make measles all of a sudden measles a big story and get and let it do, do its own thing, which it's done. And you on the political side of it, to distract everyone from the simple fact that the flu vaccine this year does not work <laughs> at all. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. <laughs> no, it does not work. <laughs> and nobody mentions that during this discussion, if you haven't noticed. So Nurse Tracy, who works with um, dying kids, it's a fun job. Um, she, uh, When she started to work here at this, uh, this hospital, she had to get a booster for measles because, you know, it had been so long that she, you know, I guess it goes with the effectiveness wears off. She says she'd been around all kinds of stuff. Didn't catch any measles. She's around sick people, sick kids with measles, with everything. Didn't catch any measles. 
the, 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 the insiders on the, in the medical field are very skeptical about this. And I, I think you're right. I think that it was a distraction. Um, I looked at another angle, two other angles, of course. I did, there was a lot of talk about mandatory, mandatory vaccinations, making it mandatory, which is a very... Right, and if you listen to Josh Ernest, he talks uh-huh. about that, and he said they don't want to do that, and I think they don't want to do it because it would really cause a backlash. Big backlash. Um, do we have that clip? That's the clip we play when we play oh, the yeah, Josh right, 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 right. in there. He, he said yeah, it. We got it, we got it, we got it. Um, let me see... The other thing, well, it, for the politi- for the politicization of it, August will be National Immun- Immunization Awareness Month, which will be perfect. You know, that will really be leading up to the uh, uh, to the elections. It could make everybody it, see. I mean, August. Yeah, August. Well, the elections are still a year after that. Yeah, but it, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, this anti this this thing. I think it works. To make it sound as though Republicans are anti-science and they're yeah, totally. a bunch of it's not just, old, yeah. to, old toads, you know, sitting <laughs> yeah. around. I don't believe this is true. Steam engines are good enough. But they, but they, I think Rand Paul, I, he got screwed on this one. Somebody well, he, screwed you know, Rand him. Paul is too casual. And by the way, he's got screwed anyway. He got screwed with his appearance. He is not a good look. He is not a presidential looking guy. He's <laughs> a go. creepy looking guy. Let's face it. He's a creepy looking guy that is just slightly untrustworthy. And he talks with that strange voice that yeah. I want to mm. discuss in a future show. You know what was the best, the best thing I saw about Let me this? just say this. That strange voice, curiously, is the same cadence, and I'm going to prove this, the same cadence and style voice as Glenn Greenwald. Oh. Same pauses, okay, good. Same pregnancy like here that. and there, like and, the, and the way he ro- rolls the words out, it's an, like an accent of some never, sort. Never, both these guys, yeah. and their mm-hmm. accent from where? Never seen them in the same room at the same time. Never yeah, seen the same photo. That I think this was my favorite meme going around for this ant, and this this is this caught on so quickly. People and people love doing this crazy, kooky Republican, you nut jobs. Where really it is, uh, quite honestly, a lot of liberals who are just behind on schedule and just forgetting. That's the facts. We, we have those facts from, from uh, the organizations themselves about uh, uh, people not being on schedule with their kids. I love the uh, Roald Dahl story. Did you see that? No. Oh. Uh, some pe- I'll read this to you. This is from the Washington Post. Some, but it was everywhere. Some people seem to think measles is a nuisance disease, irritating and briefly unpleasant but otherwise harmless. For many, it's not so bad. For others, the measles is serious and potentially fatal. Blah, blah, children. Eh. Uh, then we have Roald Dahl, the renowned author of Boy, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, and scores of other books and screenplays lost his daughter Olivia to measles in 1962. In 1988, about seven years before his death, he wrote a poignant plea, which I'd never heard of, never seen before. But here it is. Uh, Olivia, my eldest daughter, caught measles when she was seven years old. As the illness took its usual course, I can remember reading to her often in bed and not feeling particularly alarmed about it. Then one morning, when she was well on the road to recovery, I was sitting on on her bed showing her how to fashion little animals out of colored pipe cleaners. And when it came time, when it came to her turn to make one herself, I noticed that her fingers and her mind were not working together and she couldn't do anything. Are you feeling all right? I asked her. I feel all sleepy, she said. In an hour, she was unconscious. In 12 hours, she was dead. Jeez. And so, you know, because of Roald Dahl, it's like, wow, my God, this is Roald Dahl. I never heard this story. So, well, I don't think he would be making it up. He may have. No. Uh, sound, it's sick if he was. They just, they got deep, man. They got deep for this. Well, there's money in the vaccine, obviously. But then they, uh, well, yeah. And then I was thinking also the Ebola vaccine, you know, they're going to hand that out. Oh, I had a great note from somebody about that. Wow, let me just grab this for a second. Hold on. This was from one of our producers. I have it here. Uh, producer Nick. A few months ago, a friend of mine from the Army was going to Africa to help with the Ebola outbreak. I laid down the no agenda knowledge on him. He argued against it, but was open minded about what I was telling him. Probably because I'm not like Alex Jones and don't scream it's real in people's faces. I (laughs) I give disclaimers that I have no knowledge of what truth is. Well, he just came back from his tour and is now in a three-week quarantine. He sent me this message out of the blue. Dude, 
Next time I'm in New York, we have to talk off the net. This whole thing was interesting. Let's just say almost everywhere else I went outside of the capital getting ETU facilities had less than one case of Ebola in the entire country. So we will uh, be getting an update from uh, producer Nick soon as he speaks huh. to his uh, guy on the inside, which I've been saying this is the military is not there to do anything for Ebola. No, hmm. no. And then they brought back this Andrew Wakefield thing and which, too much action with oil. Oh, yeah. Oil and uh, resources, new oil in West Africa and uh, poor, poor leadership. I mean, just boots, boots on the ground, boots on the ground. Get that. I got a, We got an interesting note. I think we both got it. I'm looking for it now uh, from the Japanese guy. Yes, the one about um, about the what the Japanese public's uh, res, uh, how they how they view. This, we uh, don't have any confirmation of this. We do have people in Japan, and maybe somebody can can confirm this. But essentially, he says, and I use the word essentially that's on okay. purpose. And it's okay. He, he says that the Japanese were not on. You know, they these two guys that were. I have it here. I have the okay. note. Read it, please. Uh, and he's, he has a New York Times, he references a New York Times article about how the Japanese feel about this. And he says, I disagree with this article. In Japan, most people don't seem to outrage. Even manga, which are their comics, suggest that we he sent this little copy of it, suggest the public feels like the hostages took a chance to be involved in that part of the world. In the comic you see here, ISIS gives Japanese, the Japanese a warning. And the Japanese public basically says, and he said basically, Aren't you responsible? Meaning, aren't the hostages responsible for going to the Middle East and getting captured? And why do we have the responsibility for paying all that money because you made that stupid mistake? That's the attitude. Maybe not everyone thinks this way, but I think it's a general attitude, so I feel the New York Times article is a lie. (laughs) It's a lie, he says. And of course, um, this is all just coincidentally uh, comes together with uh, the Abe changing uh, the Constitution, so that uh, Japan can now militarize uh, something they were always very proud of not doing and not being involved in war since World War II. And now, of course, Japan coming back into the fray, uh, thanks in part to this. It's just, it, these videos are great. You, 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 you pretend to kill one guy and then everyone goes back to war. It's phenomenal. Just phenomenal. It's the way it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, whether it was set up ahead of time or not, the, it, clearly the legs that this uh, measles vaccine story has uh, is just being used to make to kookify people, kookify. And it's, well, that's the that's but this is going to go on. They've done this with climate change. They've can, you know every the Republicans are all crazy. Yeah, and the Republicans are gun nuts. So the women, you know, this has been this the fact that the Republicans can't take any defensive measures uh to stop this or reverse they should it or, just give up they should just start a new party this is this is ruined this is they need to start over i don't know what their problem is but it's, it's i don't know that they even know this is going well on. a number of Maybe them are just stupid the problem is a number of them are recognizably nuts the democrat party is nuts too but you know this is so much better come on it's great fun to say they deny science <laughs> End of story. It's nice end of, science. This, this is what they, they deny science is the end of story. You have nothing left to say. <laughs> Just deny science. The joke of it is, well, you know. I, yeah. What's the joke? Okay. Of it? What's the joke? And, of it? Well, we do have to make one mention, short mention of the Super Bowl. Yes. Wow. Because we Super Bowl was this last show, and we, uh, it, I predicted it was going to be uh, a jip at the end. Yeah. It was, but not by any officials methodologies by stupidity right again the seattle team which should have won because they had a spectacular ending that should have brought them the winning score and then they threw the ball away by stupidly throwing a crossing route two feet from the goal line in the middle of a tight defense okay that makes sense and maybe it was thrown i don't know here's what i think and vegas by the way lost their ass um vegas never loses well, ass. okay a lot of people they, they lost a, a lot of they money. They take the ch- the ch- the chunk in the middle. They, they oh. if the bets come in for the other side, they change the odds. And to here's what I, here's what I think happened. You know, they got into a fight. They got into I saw that they got into a fight because this was not supposed to happen this way. And the, and they all went, dudes, 
What are you doing? You can't win. You can't win this game. We're supposed to win. That's what I saw. <laughs> why else were they you know, fighting? I never thought about why it. Else, well, why else were they fighting? The taste of the fight was just the sports, poor sports. No, no, no. There's, there was money involved in that. Those guys, someone got pissed off. Like, what? I'm going to smack you around, boy. You ruined the whole idea. Well, you know, the, here's, the, here's the interesting point to that theory, which I'm now going to uh, <laughs> subscribe to. Since we, we believe these games are all rigged, I have to accept this theory on. I just have to accept just it. have to accept. You must, you must accept. Because of the no agenda th- <laughs> thinking. The guy who made the interception was an opportunist. He was a rookie yeah. who was not clued in on this. No, Ben, he, what are you doing? Don't, don't catch the ball, moron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They've screwed it up. Oh, and man. according to the coach, who is, you know, who is now going to be ruined for life, uh, he said... That well, this play was supposed to be an incompletion. Huh. He said it was a play that we it was a throwaway. Right. Now, I'm thinking when he says this that he's just an idiot. But Maybe that, not. the more I think about it, yeah. I mean, he's claiming that he's going to throw a play away. Now, there could be all kinds mm. of reasons for doing that. Mm. And then they were going to run Marshawn Lynch, but the guy intercepted it and screwed up everything. It's possible that, yeah, I think that that's as good wow. an explanation for what happened as any I've ever heard. If we are to believe, and we kind of believe that that's these all games rigged. Are rigged. Yeah, it's rigged. Made for a great game. Made for a great ending. Oh, the game was ter- terrific, especially that crazy catch at the end where the guy, the ball bounced off yeah. his stomach yeah. and then hit yeah. his legs. And then yeah. <laughs> it, was really- oh, it was a great game. It was fun to watch. And, yeah, uh, that you watched it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing. I you went, saw the end. Yeah, I saw the end, but I went to, after the show, I went to a crystal class. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, yeah. okay, we're taking, uh, we're stopping <laughs> no, the show and no. we're going to talk about this. No, I'm not going to talk about it. Come on. There, I gotta, I got, what it was. What would you, what is it? You, you, the show, we wrapped up the show. You, you had to get out of there real fast. We were doing our little finishing. Let's pick, a, let's pick some art. Let me take a title. I got to get out of here. It was not and like so that. You rushed over, and I said, where are you going? And you say, I'm taking a crystal class where yeah. you learn the energy of the crystal. Yes. And the she god who rules the universe yes. and something like that. I can't yes. remember. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And then you shot out of there, and you went to the crystal class, and you said, this will be great show material. That's what <laughs> it's, you said. It's not that great. <laughs> It was fun though. There was me and, and fifteen uh, girls, fifteen women. Yeah, young women. We sat in a circle, and they, and they, did they tell a secret and then share a hug? I told I told a secret. Everybody was like, uh, "Well, I'm here to learn about the crystals and blah 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 blah." blah. And I'm like, "Hold on a second. This is the romantic heart uh, crystal session, is it not? This is. Uh, I, I read that this was for people who are heartbroken. Here I am. I, I want my crystals. Show me how to use them." And they all went, oh, I got three numbers at least. So Who's this guy? <laughs> you got three numbers. <laughs> and I'm friends with all of them on Facebook now. That's just hilarious. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Facebook friends. I will report on my, my crystals after I've uh, evaluated them for a little while. I'm, I'm, oh, you I'm, actually got yourself a batch of crystals yeah. you're wearing around your neck? No, no, no. You can put one of them you can put in water and the other one you can... <laughs> Spit take. <laughs> Do you, I, I I left my uh, the the names of them over uh, in the. I can grab them if you want. But yeah, oh, hold on. I'd like to hear what this crystal you put in water. Hold on, and it gives off the vibes of the universe into the water. The this, the precious water which absorbs the energy of the crystal. And then I slip into the tub with bubble bath, I might add, and lots of candles all around me. <laughs> and the energy of the crystal flows through my it's, soul. It's the candles that'll kill you. Okay, I have, um, just for a second, this is, okay, so you have the pink kunzite, which opens the heart on all levels, so it can receive everything from a sense of stability to a profound connection with the universe. Kunzite? Yes. And wh- where, does this, where is it documented that it does what you just said? On my card. <laughs> <laughs> and, but my favorite is the rhodochrosite. Which, rhodochrosite? This is the one you put in water. Uh, so it's ro- R-H-O-D-O, 
Yeah, I, I get that C-H-R-O-I, part. C-H-R-O-I, O-R-O-C-I-T-S-S-I-T-E, rhodochrosite. Enlivens dull senses, provides an immediate sense of bodily awareness, assists in overcoming negative self-talk or destructive relationships, promotes physical vitality and sensuality. Is it pink? Yes. Yes. Uh, especially useful for transcending physical trauma relating to accidents or abuse. Returns yeah, users- well, actually. Yeah. Go on. It returns users to their body and provides a sense of enjoying the physical. You are out of your body? Oh, yeah. Can also have a flirtatious or vivacious effect if used with that intent. Pink rhodochrosite is a strong stone <laughs> to aid emotional healing. It encourages you to feel love for yourself. Yeah, that's what I need. And its energy will assist you in yes. meditation to reach a state of joy and sublime happiness. Incas its believe... Energy may, its energy may stimulate your inner child. You mock me. Bring a deep childlike happiness and joy you into your me. life. You mock it me. It aids mock you me. to bring deep forgotten <laughs> memories to the surface for healing. Listen... Incas believe rhodochrosite was blood of former rulers hardened to the stone and revered it as a memento mori. There you go. It's a pretty stone when, when it's a big giant crystal and cut and sliced. Very pretty. It looks like a, it looks exactly, at least this picture, it looks exactly like a beet. It does. All right. So you just mock me. Fine. At least I'm trying something new. <laughs> trying something new. <laughs> All right, let's I talk. The spinning was nutty enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try yoga next too. Oh well, you could probably need the the uh, flexibility. Oh, I think yoga will be nice. I'm I'm, uh, I'm in, you're going to try yoga next. Yes. You know, what's wrong with that? Lots of people do yoga, John. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. I you said people... yeah, no. You said yeah, no. You said yeah, no. Yes, no, maybe. I was actually. I don't know. What I was actually hoping to do a count with a with a with I guess a no yeah, count. I got a clicker that I was gonna uh, that you can click on it tells you numbers I would I got to get this yes no thing eliminated I don't do. need do. everyone to the email oh the explanation for the yes no and they I don't need the I don't care about just, you what just need to get yes, rid of no it or how its usage is developed over the years I don't like using it yeah, I you, want it gone you just need help stopping I agree yeah maybe some crystal. I'll bet you there's a crystal. <laughs> I, like, I shall ask the crystal. Aware. I will ask the crystal lady. Yeah, see if I can be more aware of. of I, but here's language. what I will do. I will post this in. Um, in the crystal. In the crystal. Oh, the crystal Facebook group. Yes, group. Now you might want to try the garnet. Because the garnet. garnet. Help, I have one too. The garnet helps you focus. Um, on what uh, on on your uh, strategy for your you know to win your war, and this could be your. Is this what you got? You got some yeah, garnet. I got too? a garnet. Yeah, I got it, and you it's right here. War? I use the garnet for the show to uh, inspire me and protect me. Huh? Yeah. Who should use? Here's who should use this road. road I whatever it is. <laughs> It's common for many people to evade certain issues, even though you know that you feel a deep sense of mistrust of some person at a gut level. This strong reaction in the gut or within the solar plexus or power shock. Fine, fine, fine. Let's move on uh, to the biggest lie of the week, which I found so beautifully covered up and pasted over. Uh, This Brian Williams lie. Ah, this is great. Yeah, here's I have a couple clips. And by the way, I want to make sure that we remember that it harkens back to the Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, lie. that's right. Hillary Clinton lie. Exactly the same idea. Well, actually, this is a little more, a little rougher. Here is a lie one. We started with a terrible moment a dozen years back during the invasion of Iraq when the helicopter we were traveling in was forced down after being hit by an RPG. Our traveling NBC News team was rescued, surrounded, and kept alive by an armored mechanized platoon from the U.S. Army 3rd Infantry. Okay, so the uh, the discrepancy here is that his helicopter was not actually hit by an RPG, but a different helicopter. Here's line number two. Ladies and gentlemen, during the Iraq invasion, U.S. Army Command Sergeant Major Tim Turpak was responsible for the safety of Brian Williams and his NBC News team after their Chinook helicopter was hit and crippled by enemy fire. Fan. Fantastic. So somehow this this comes out that he's full of crap, and then he comes up with an apology, our Brian Williams does. On this broadcast last week, in an effort to honor and thank a veteran who protected what? me and so many others after a ground fire in... I'm sorry, did you have a question? No, I'm saying 
He's he's already setting up. He has an excuse for doing this. Oh, yeah. On this broadcast last week, in an effort to honor and thank a veteran who protected me and so many others after a ground fire incident in the desert during the Iraq war invasion, I made a mistake in recalling the events of 12 years ago. <laughs> it did not take long to hear from some brave men and women in uh -huh. the air crews uh -huh. who were also in that desert. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. We all landed after the ground fire incident and spent two harrowing nights harrowing. in a sandstorm in the Iraq desert. This was a bungled attempt by me to thank one special veteran and by extension, our brave military men and women, veterans everywhere, those who have served while I did not. I hope they know they have my greatest respect and also now my apology. Epic fail. Yeah. And just to show that he's full of crap, I found a segment from him on David Letterman in 2013, lying again. We were in uh, some helicopters. What we didn't know was we were north of the invasion. We were the northernmost Americans in Iraq. We were going to drop some bridge portions across the Euphrates so the 3rd Infantry could cross on them. Uh, two of our four helicopters were hit by ground fire, including the one I was in. No kidding. Uh, RPG and, and AK-47. What, what altitude were you? What a liar. What a liar. Wow. What a liar. That, that Letterman clip is the one that closes the deal on him. Oh, yeah. He's a liar. He's a sack of poop liar. Yeah, liar. he said, well, <clears throat> it was just an accident. I was trying to honor some guy. And then he goes on Letterman yeah. and tells the same story, only exaggerates it. We're way ahead of everybody else. We're dropping, you know, some bridge <laughs> yeah, components. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, like, as though he said, yeah. not only hit by the missile or rpg rpg and he was not only hit but he they were doing good workers he lies he lies he lies, he lies. This is just, he's done no i don't know i think he's trying i think he, he'll get out of it i think well he'll the nbc's got enough trouble get the ratings suck they That's got msnbc that. to deal with and they're a bunch of phonies yeah and true. they got now they got a the news anchor who has to be a very trusted <laughs> person to deliver the news lying. who's lying and lies. then lying again lies yeah I've well, oh, we yeah. seen him, and he's in a lot of movies and stuff. He's an actor. <laughs> yeah. I've always thought Williams was a... I, well, I told you, he used to work in New York, and uh, uh, my, let's see, one, two, my, yeah, my first wife, I get to say that now, um, she uh, had all kinds of work done, and he was doing, uh, uh, like, little packages about local plastic surgeons and hitting on her. Well, he never had any work done on his nose, which is crooked. No, I'm not saying he had work done, but that, 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 that's what he did. He did human interest pieces on boob jobs. Yeah, and then he was like an uh, anchor on MSNBC for a long time where he yeah. honed his skills yeah. as a newsreader. Mm -hmm. But this is, be, this is not what you want from your anchor to be a... No. And they did it twice. That's good. Isn't how, it? how long ago was the Letterman? The 2013. 2013. And, and what was the other one? Just a few weeks ago? So nobody called him out on the Letterman thing, apparently. No. 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 Because no. I guess no, nobody watches Letterman. Liars. Wow. Liars, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's distressing. <laughs> no skin off my nose. No, but it's distressing that, that you have to assume this is a component of, of our media. Well, it, it, a takedown, perhaps. No, I'm talking about the glorification of oneself. Oh, oh, oh of course, yeah. Uh, by news anchor men who are just trying to embellish stories to make themselves look good to get a reaction. This is mm. not what you want. You don't want people reporting no. that are doing this. No. Now, of course, we already proved that the news media, the way it exists today, is crap anyway. Uh, yes. Now, here's I'm, a big story. This is the big story that somebody wrote in and said, oh, you guys, uh, there's nobody's reporting this, but they're reporting it. And I think this is a, technically a huge scandal that I think it has all kinds of implication. But play the anthem hacked. Oh, man. 
This really, so we got that email, but this kind of just started to break today. Well, at this hour, millions of Americans don't even know it yet, but their health insurance company has been hacked. Someone broke into the database of Anthem, which is the second largest health insurer in America. Anthem is responsible for many of the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans. It's not clear how many people this impacts, but the database held personal info for about 80 million customers and employees. Anthem is offering free credit monitoring and is increasing its password protection. Well, that includes us. We're, on, we're in that database. You? Yeah, the, the Mevio had... Uh, oh, yeah, we Blue had Cross. some Blue Cross. And it includes former, uh, former customers. We're, so we're, and it's social security numbers, addresses, etc. Yeah, and, and, and now by law, which is the thing that always bothers, my doctors uh, at the Albany Medical Group uh, which is in Emeryville, they, uh, they're older guys. And about a year or two ago, they started, they all have these tablets, these little tablets they had to buy because they have some software now because the government has mandated that all medical records be electronic in the, for the, in the near future. And they had to either move some of the old handwritten stuff onto the electronic side. I don't know what they did with the old records, whatever the case it's not secure that way. It's secure when it's a handwritten record that's in a yes, file folder. Yep. You go to the doctor, they pull your file out, and he's got his notes on there. Now it's on. A, it's in the cloud. And if this sort of thing happens with Anthem Blue Cross, that means they're going to be hacking everybody's medical records. And by the way, that is considered a, pr- a private that's private information. But if anyone can just hack it and pull it down, mm-hmm. the insurance companies are going to love that. Oh, I didn't know this guy had that ailment. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> right. Hadn't even thought about that angle. That's where it's going. Oh, man. <sighs> yeah. Well, this is, and I, I, I always have to refer, whenever this happens, uh, to the fine work of um, Theodore Kaczynski. <laughs> industrial society and its future link in the show notes have a read this is all really the more we rely on technology the more it's going to start messing with us and this is a prime example um and this is oracle by the way these guys use oracle so for, this is a big problem um if i mean yeah you have sec- you have uh, security for getting into it but you would think that the oracle uh, product has it's just not that's stealable, you know? I mean, how, how... But if there's passwords involved and there's outside, if you can get into it from an, from an mm-hmm. outside line, mm-hmm. it's, you, it's just impossible to protect. Find the guy with the password, right. put a gun to his head, give him you the password, you type it in, you take all the data out, you download right. the whole thing because right. he's the administrator. Yeah. You find out who the guy is and you just put a gun to his head. You can get all the information you want. Anyone can do this. If you're going to put private information in the cloud by law, what? this is going to happen. Well, you say cloud. We don't know if it's in the cloud or just it doesn't matter where it was. They well, got it. Beside the point. It's on a computer. So that, let probably, me allow me to ask. My doctor stuff's quote unquote in the cr- cloud. The cloud doesn't mean anything. Right. It's a meaningless term. Yes. I mean, it means there's a computer that's online somewhere that you're linking into. But I'm just saying that you can get into these things and, and now they've done this i mean that's just an this is like a one salvo i mean next thing you know everything's going to be and of course they immediately uh, cooperate with the fbi this is the, they're ahead of the cyber sharing uh, uh agreements but they're already doing it and this uh, this kind of comes with a coincidental launch i'm not sure it's probably not related but i did find let me just find this for you i thought it was kind of interesting because it was um uh, it includes Megan Smith, uh, who a uh, f- uh, famous uh, Google uh, exec, who uh, now is the chief technology officer for these United States of Gitmo Nation. Eb, she wants you to join the U.S. Digital Service. Have you seen this? The uh, no USDS, uh, uh, the United States Digital Service. There's a little, a nice little video, a little promo video, which includes her and some dudes named Ben and dudes named Dudettes named. What's the USDS.gov? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'll play the video here. The these sound. tours of duty that, that we set people up with, like, these are things that they're going to be telling the grandkids about. Like, there was that time when I worked for the White House, and here's what I did at the White House, and it was more meaningful than anything I've done before or since. 
In tech, I think a lot of tech. us, we just in tech. we're like, solving really big, complex, difficult problems and thinking, all right, this is crazy problem. I know software, I know technology, so how do I use that knowledge to fix it? Like just any big problem. Yeah, I never ever pictured myself doing this until I saw someone else doing it and thought, that's awesome. I finally that's get awesome. to use my skills too. And these are these are such hipster people. The multi culty girl, you got the dude with the beard. Do actually make a difference in people's lives. Um, and, I think and the music is so inviting. Make a long-term difference. The United States Digital Service. This is Megan. Is the Americans who have tech skills come into government and help and do what we need to do from D.C. and across this country. By the way, Megan Smith needs to uh, fix her teeth. Have you seen her teeth? Well, I had her on. I used to have her on my old silicon spin show quite often. I didn't notice that her teeth oh, were off. My you know, my teeth may not be the best in the world, but this is just, just crooked and just sticking out all over the place. There's, there's no reason in 2015 to have those teeth. Huh. Well, I never expected to be here, and I realized that that's something I said with each step forward that I've taken so each far. Each step forward. Right now, it's just a really uh, critical time to get technologists into the government because there is uh, there is a huge desire and need. The skills that we have as technologists in the private sector are still quite rare in government, and whether it's for a year or six months or two months or even for a couple weeks. The time that you spend in U.S. government can make a dramatic impact. Figuring out how we can use technology better to help the lives of American people is not a new challenge for the federal government. New. This is something that we've been working on um, since day one of the administrations. So the administrations before us have, have tried to solve as well. I have explained to people how broken things are. Broken! And a lot of them have asked me, why would you walk into that? And the answer is because it matters. You know, I, I thought about this a lot, and, <laughs> and I just remember thinking, wow, I know technology. This is how I'll serve my country. In yeah. many cases, we're addressing the needs of the people who are most in need, for whatever definition you want to use, least able to help themselves. That's, that's the really guy from the healthcare.gov. Typically did in Silicon Valley. We shifted how people are working, facilitated by technology. Ooh. And those shifts will outlast the specific technical solutions that we build. Ooh. And that opportunity is unparalleled. 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 At times, I'm not sure if I'll finish my term with a concrete deliverable, but I know that the culture is shifting. And that deliverable? <laughs> yeah. has to I have no deliverable. I'm just sitting around, I don't know. Being an attacker. Start sometime. Some people are hands on keyboard coders. There's also amazing designers. Coders. Hey, don't, be, don't call them coders. They don't, coders don't like being called coders. There's amazing design thinking people. There's product managers. There's people who really know that subject matter or that user who are, you know, scrubbed in together on these fabulous cross-functional teams. Fabulous. So, uh, scrubbed in together. Is that what she said? Yeah, this is Megan. Scrubbed in together on these fabulous cross-platform teams. Listen to this. This is gobbledygook of the highest order. Subject Hold on. This is really good. This is it. This is the last bit here. So. A concrete deliverable. But I know that the culture is shifting and uh -huh. that... It has to start sometime. Some people are hands on keyboard coders. There's also amazing designers. There's amazing design thinking people. There's product managers. There's people who really know that subject matter or that user who are, you know, scrubbed in together on these fabulous cross functional teams. Scrubbed in together on these fabulous cross function teams. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got to write that down. Hold on. That's a winner. Scrubbed in. Hold on. What does that mean? Scrubbed in together. On these fabulous cross function teams. And that's Megan Smith calling people coders, hands on coders. That's rude. It's just rude. So um, you may not think you belong in the United States Digital Service, but we want you. Yeah, we want you. Oh, she's a, we want you for the United States Digital Service. All right. Sad. Just sad. I don't know. Depressing. Somewhat. Um, so let me in. ask you a question. With um, Scrubbed in together. <laughs> now that you and I are scrubbed in together on this fabulous cross-function. We're now we're scrubbed in together. <laughs> on this fabulous cross-function team, I have a question. With the information that we know has now been taken, which includes yours and mine, presumably, what can be done? And I think my information has now been stolen many times over. Does this mean that people will uh, assume my identity? Um, does it matter at this point anymore having this information, a social well, security 80 number? 80 million, you know, they, they pick and choose. 
I think these companies need to be sued. Ah, yeah. Well, uh, don't they get some kind of indemnification if they uh, signed on to the sharing agreement? I'm sure when you signed up for the operation, for the Anthem operation, you probably already signed your rights away. What I mean is with the cyber sharing legislation that we read that is now law, when they share things, if they agree to the sharing agreement, they are um, uh, indemnified. I think the government. Yes. I th- maybe this information went straight to uh, NSA. You don't know. Who knows? I don't know if it's any good to them, but. No, well, might be. They don't care. Yeah. Well, I think, I, think the, <laughs> I think the main thing is, um, uh, you know, you connect, connecting emails and phone numbers, particularly phone numbers, I think would be the, would be a bad thing. That's where the real trouble comes in. I think. Maybe. Yeah. Here, here's one for you. Since we're talking about the medical system, play mm-hmm. Pelosi. Mm-hmm. They're bang at the moon, something that it's not going to uh, uh, to work. And instead of proposing any, which would be welcome to hear, good suggestions they may have to approve the Affordable Care Act, they're bang at the moon 56 times. Is she insane? <laughs> she is insane. Baying at the moon? She, I actually missed one of them because she, said, she think... says they're baying at the moon. They're baying at the moon. Yeah. And <laughs> Bang at the moon, everybody. Wow. <laughs> Bang at the moon. What is that? What is what does that mean? What is it? They're uh, pissing in the wind. Wow. Hmm. Shoveling shit against the tide. There's that, a bunch of, there's a, yeah, there's an But she won't say that. She uses bang, bang at, at the, the moon. moon. I'm going to show my support by donating to No Agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fab. Before we do have some people to thank for show what? Before you start, John, I just want to thank everybody. Remember, I do you remember I mentioned my P.O. box on the show? Yes. 41958, Austin, Texas, 78704. Well, somehow everyone thought it was funny to send Adam stuff. Okay, what'd you get? Not, well, I got a drone. We know I got the drone, which is... Yeah, I got a drone, too. The so I, got, I, I crank up my drone. I got to talk to the drone guy. I, got, I need lessons. I haven't tried I turned, my drone. I got my drone. I'm not even sure this drone is... This this, this controller is right. So I, I flipped on the <laughs> drone. I flipped on the controller, and boom! The thing takes off like a rocket, goes straight to the ceiling, and sticks there. <laughs> <laughs> So luckily, my daughter was here, and so I said, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, daughter, go get that for me. No, no, Fetch. it was up on the ceiling. I said, Fetch. get under this thing. I'm going to kill the power, and you're going to have to catch it, because I didn't want to break it. <laughs> and so I finally got the power turned off of the, of the thing, and the drone paid attention and turned off all its motors and dropped. Yeah. She caught it, and I, did, I didn't know what I, I, I have not uh, tried my drone yet. Well, do it inside. I got uh, a, uh, I got a, I don't know from who, I got a tin of Stroopwafels, you know, the Dutch um, Stroopwafels. Oh, James Kate sent me that. You know, the Stroopwafels, we talked about those? Yeah. Okay. And then I got a lovely note from uh, D.H. Slammer. Thank you for your courage. Really not, nice, long, and Dame Bang Bang. And I got two books. I got uh, just, it's fantastic. Thank you all very much. I got a lot to do now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like it. It's nice. Nice. Very cute. Yeah, it's all cute. Okay, we have a few people to thank for supporting the program. This is the value for value model that we um, have been using since, well, not since day one. We just were doing it. Uh, But now it was certainly well into six years of our seven. And this is what keeps us going. It is uh, producers like you who are helping us be able to do this show. Prescott Johnson in East Mountain, Nova Scotia. One two three four five, uh, Tyler Oglesby in West Columbia, Texas. One 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 one, and he says, "Douchebag, check Adam. It's all well and good to tell the No Agenda faithful about Fredericksburg, but please keep it quiet around a hole." <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, I mean, exactly. John Sturk in his stad, stad Sweden, one hundred one dollars and one cent. Uh, Edward Bethuizen. Uh, no, that's... Berthusen. Uh, close, oh, close, close. Edward Berthusen. No. In Amstelveen. Beerthausen. Beerthausen. $100. Amstelveen. Mazel Tov, what'd you say? <laughs> yes. Yes. Amstelveen Mazel Tov. 
Uh, he wants to. Uh, we'll do a yeah, good karma we, we for get him. Karma, yeah, everybody, for, everybody gets. Karma. Harry Caldwell, Orange, Virginia, one hundred dollars. Ryan, oh, Rien von Richthofen in Hercules, California, right up the street for me. Actually, you, uh, that was. Uh... Rien van Reithoven. Oh, this is... Reithoven. The Reithoven. Rien is the guy who does um, fantastic building photography, art. He yes, projects stuff right. onto the no, buildings. Yeah. yeah, he's good. And thank you, Rien. Rien. Uh, Aaron Rien. Murphy, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Sir Chase McCarthy in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, San Colecchio in Charlotte, North Carolina. Huh. Uh, Sir Dingaling, Dave Carey. Claremont, Florida, 97.54. David McGee in Memphis, Tennessee, 89.10. 8.9.10. It's a nice little donation number. <clears throat> yes. Sir Kvistan, Kristen Smith, uh, Blyton, Lincolnshire, UK, uh, 75. Lars uh, Sorensen in Haslav, Denmark. Right. 75. He must Sorenson. be one of those happy people. In, yeah, the happy Dan- happy, happiest people on earth. The happy Danish. Happy, happy. Um, John Height in Folsom, California. 6969. His third donation. Fifth of the night. Money's tight, but no agenda's worth it, he says. Thank you. Uh, Tom Barron in Wellington, New Zealand. 6969. Sir Arthur Gobbets. Gobbets. Zandam. Zandam. 6969. Please don't stop the show. Wouldn't know what to do or where to go. Please accept this donation. Not big, not small. Yeah, relationship karma for everybody. Uh, Andy Peelman in Leed, Belgium. Peelman. Andy Peelman in Leed, Belgium. 6969. Showing continued support, he says. Sean McCorkle in Arlington, Virginia. 6930. John a. Car- Carlson III in Russell, Pennsylvania. Sir Harry Pilgrim hey. in Fredericksburg, Virginia. That's Different right. Fredericksburg. Thank you very much. A nice place nonetheless. Uh, Andre Rodriguez in Setubal, uh, Portugal, 5678. Was this something? Well, it's a birthday or something coming up. Yeah. Uh, or New Human Resource Karma. Ah. We'll give you that at the end. Is that, uh, I don't think that was on my list. Let me check. Uh, you, you can give him, yeah. You can give him a birthday call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they send, I, I got it. Yeah, new human resource. Zero. Yeah. Uh, Char- B- Charles Brochetti in Incheon, South Korea. Hey, all right. Uh, fifty-five, fifty-five. And uh, shirt shops there. Wow. Adrian Brown, London, UK. Fifty-five, fifty-five. Adam De Moore, Moore, Moore. D E M O U Y, Milton, Florida, 55 55. Double nickels on the dime from Stephen Schwartz and Shirts, Texas. Uh, Sean Longworth in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, Martin Krupka in Jacksonville, Florida. A lot of double nickels on the dimes today. Jason Jackson in Carmi, Illinois. Jacob Swenson in Saratoga Springs, Utah. Dennis Good in Bettendorf, Iowa. John Dunn in Arvada, Colorado. David John Drew in Victoria, B.C., over by Spuzzum. Michael Sabers in Danville, Pennsylvania. And whoops, I think just jumped ahead a mile. Oh, there it is. Uh, Patrick Daly in Rochester, New Hampshire, 55. He says a serious no agenda. A vote is in order. On the dime means exactly not plus 10 cents. Yeah, he was drunk when he sent that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's not the, the genesis of it. No, 55 is, it. yeah, double nickels on the dime, 5, 5, 10. And he has some stick up his butt about it being 55 exactly. I don't know. Right. Well, he, did, but he doesn't realize where this came from. Came uh, from Pat- Sergeant Fred, I think, didn't it? I think it was Sergeant, yeah. Roth can't, right. Rothcamp Roth Camp Drums, LLC, in Ripon, Wisconsin, 55. Zachary Zeisler in Omaha, Nebraska, 55. Eric Hochel in Berlin, Deutschland, 52. Uh, Matthew Clay in Bloomington, Illinois, 5150. Uh, you know this thing. Why, why does it do that? Uh, Henry Cunningham in Cincinnati, Ohio, 5150. 
BioLife donor, Oak Grove, Missouri, 5150. Bruce Spencer, 5077 in Sacramento, California. Ryan Hogan, Sylvan Lake, Alberta, Canada, 5005. Christopher Walker in De Pere, De Pere, De Pere, as in old the dad, Wisconsin, 50. These are all $50 donors. Dustin Martin in Salem, Oregon. Adam Beck in Las Wages, Nevada. Matthew Janazuski in Chicago, Illinois. Phil Rodas in Fairview Park, Australia. Artman, John B. Artman in, uh, in Beijing. Hmm. What does he say here? Longtime boner, first time donor. Keep, you yeah, know, okay, good. That'd be a, a long time donor. Kevin Johnson, Phoenix, Arizona. Stephen Mill- Milliken in Corpus Christi, Texas. And finally, we get down to Vision 9 in Marmora, Ontario, Canada. Bruce, Bruce Classen in Valencia, California, where the oranges are. Paul Levy in, uh, or Levy in Grinnell, Iowa. Scott Walls in San Antonio, Texas. Simon Lings, Lingeshed. That's a good one. I can't pronounce it. Uh, he's also in Denmark. And finally... Kyle Morrison in Duncan, British Columbia, Jason Deluzio in Chadsford, Pennsylvania, and Sir Brett Farrell, uh, our buddy, Parts Unknown. Were there I any? Used to say Oklahoma City, but I believe he's somewhere else. Uh, those were checks. Were there any notes with those? Or no, the I think those were both checks. Yeah, they and just I came believe from. Kyle Morrison wanted to call out. Let me see. Did he have a douchebag? Yes. yes. Matt Wilson is a douchebag. Douchebag. There you go. A Tinder profile potfather seeks pancake mistress. Oh, let me tell you something. I, I'm regretting that Christina set that up for me, that Tinder thing. Yeah. Ugh. Because you can only sign up with your Facebook profile. So face, Why? You can't log in any other way. It, it connects well, to that's Facebook. that's stupid. Are they part of Facebook? Are they owned by Facebook? Uh, Is this a Facebook operation? Uh, no, but when you do that as a developer, you get a whole bunch of Facebook information. Like an unbelievable amount. I'm getting spammed by every dating site, every... It's just It's incredible. And you get automatically signed up for stuff. Ugh. So you're not recommending this. I'm not recommending this. This is good. good. Yeah, of course not. You should not. This, oh, no, no. it's just a big marketing scam to make you buy more crap. And, uh, and I got an, uh, because I'm trying to go all in on some things on some devices and some not. I have my old tablet, the Nexus 7, and I installed uh, Google Now. Oh, man. Have you looked at the permissions for that thing? Oh, it takes over the place. It can. It can read, it says it right there, it can read all of your private information. <laughs> it's just, it can read everything, everything. And it says it, with, unabashedly. Yeah, well, so nobody cares. I care. Well, you're one of few. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, and I think most of these uh, dating apps work the same way. You have to sign in with Facebook, and, and they're getting so much information about you and your friends and everything. And it's just, it's showing up everywhere. I, you know, I notice these things. I, I, I know what to look for, and I'm just seeing the ads that are popping up. But I didn't sign up for seeking, what is it called? Uh, uh, seekingarrangement.com. Seekingarrangement.com. Yeah, that's sugar daddies and sugar babies. Oh, that's you. Uh, no. <laughs> seeking seeking arrangement nudge nudge dot com. <laughs> oh no, I didn't sign up for that. <sighs> anyway, yeah, it's a big giant scam, total scam. Now I have to. I'm probably yeah, you never get out of it. You're gonna be no, screwed. You've already right. signed. You, yeah. You're, yeah. you're doomed. Yeah, you gotta uh, throw yeah. the machines away and come up with a new name. I gotta go you change my change name. Your name legally. Change my name legally. Exactly. Well. Another reason not to be part of the Facebook bull crap. Oh, it is so annoying. Well, thank you very much to everyone who supported the show today, especially those who come in under $50 for anonymity um, or on, on some of our uh, monthly programs. These are very important for you to be a part of. Um, thank you. Uh, and also thank you, everybody. It's such nice emails people have sent me. Um, and like, yeah, yeah, I think we'll, I'll highlight a few of them maybe in the Saturday newsletter. There are some nice We get some nice mail from people. We don't get rarely once in a while i say you guys are full of crap about this Mm, i did get one that was your wife left you because you are demeaning to women you're an a-hole 
Was this from a woman? No, from a dude. Of course not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hold on a second. Hmm, That makes sense. All right. Thank you, all, everybody. Here comes your uh, karma. People always need relationship karma. I'm going to give you the jobs karma as an extra bonus. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. You've got karma. And remember to support the show for Sunday. Dvorak.org slash N-A. Pretty short today. We have Andre Rodriguez, who is a new human resource, and uh, he wants to, I guess, say hi and welcome to Gitmo Nation. And Baronetess Monica Lansing is celebrating her 14th anniversary on the 19th with her sweetie Hal. Happy birthday and happy relationship. All your buddies here at the best podcast in the universe. We have Sir Dennis Nutting becoming a baronet today and one uh, knighting, which is uh, Ryan Benson. So we'll get him up here on the podium uh, if you could. there you go. Come on, Ryan Benson, come on up, my friend. Congratulations with your winnings from that electric car company, Battery Car. Uh, thanks to your support of the best podcast in the universe, about $1,000 or more, I hereby am proud to pronounce the case to Sir Ryan of the Tesla Coil for you, my friend. Hookers and Blow, Rent Boys and Chardonnay, Malted Barley and Hops, Das Equis and Dutch Dominatrix, The Girlfriend Experience and Good Bourbon, Poppy Van Winkle Bourbon, served by Oktoberfest Frau Lines, Vodka and Vanilla, Bong Hits and Bourbon, Sparkling Cider and Escorts, and our favorite go-to, Mutton and Mead. And go to No Agenda Nation. Dot com slash rings rings and uh, fill out your information. Apparently that drives some people crazy. It drives people very, very nuts. We've been looking at a resurgence of the six week cycle. Uh, yeah. And we should see, well, that in, in the classic sense, it should be March 1st. If we're going to believe oh, yeah, it's okay. ha- oh, yeah. you've, you've March 1st, attracted. March 1st. I got yeah, this I nice little, got this nice little ditty from, um, I guess there's a, a longer documentary. This is former FBI assistant director Thomas Fuentes, who explains in a very short clip how the, what the 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 purpose of the six weeks. Yeah, I heard this is a great clip. If you're uh, submitting budget proposals for a law enforcement agency for intelligence agency. You're not going to submit the proposal that we won the war on terror and everything's great because the first thing's going to happen is your budget's going to be cut in half. <laughs> you know, it's my uh, opposite of Jesse Jackson's keep hope alive. This is keep fear alive. <laughs> Bingo, yeah. boom, shakalaka. I don't know why I didn't get, get that clip, but I heard it. Keep and, fear alive. Uh, keep fear alive. It's a great clip. Keep, yeah, keep fear alive. I'm going to put that in the Evergreens, actually. I think that's Evergreen. Keep fear word. alive. Maybe that's a show title. Oh, also a good idea. Let me just put that in our Evergreen be worth it someday um going after debbie washerman schultz oh please the, uh, have you heard please this do. <laughs> um this is from the i guess the shape-shifting jews department um I, I found this to be interesting on multiple levels this is a secret recording from i'm not quite sure where she was but she's talking about um, almost the sovereignty of the Jews in America. It's a strange clip, and I th- it's probably out of context, but this is now being uh, uh, shuttled around, I guess, trying to discredit her. I've been married uh, going on 24 years, and I know, you know I have, all of you probably at one point or another have, uh, have met my incredible children who are now 15, 15, and 11, because we, we have the problem of assimilation, we have the problem of intermarriage, Problem with assimilation and intermarriage? We, we have a problem that too many generations of Jews don't realize the importance of our institutions strengthening our community. What? We have problems with too many Jews not understanding our institutions and strengthening of our community, I guess because of intermarriage? Particularly with the rise of anti-Semitism. And global intolerance. Ah, there we go. Anti-Semitism, of course, that is uh, the uh, the mantra of what is happening in Europe. Which, obviously, we saw in horrific technicolor in just the last week. No, nah, in horrific technicolor. But they're trying to discredit her with that. I don't. Not such a big deal to me. So, who's she married to here? Steve Schultz. Ah, I don't know. She's married to a guy named Schultz. Hmm. There's no wiki entry for him. Hmm. 
But if his name is Schultz, mm-hmm. that's a Jewish name. What is maybe he's Northern Jew and she's Southern Jew? What's the I, deal I, here? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what it's about. Um, this is good. This one, and this uh, was sent to me. But actually, I'll, I'll back it up. Let me go. Uh, no, I'm going to start say right here. This was uh, this is about Greece. Of course, we didn't really discuss it that much, but we know that the Syriza party uh, caught it in. And I was alerted to the Minister of Finance. Now, of course, a lot is uh, happening with, with Greece and their, uh, and their finances. And I think it's now no agenda thinking to be, to be looking at cabinet members ever since uh, the Ukrainian uh, finance minister was literally put in overnight, becoming a citizen with a passport. She's an American hedge fund manager. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she's there to manage the finances of Ukraine. Um, Yanis... Varoufakis is the, uh, this is fantastic, he is the finance minister for Greece, the new one now, and this guy is, well, he might as well just, you might as well just call him an American. Uh, so he did graduate from uh, uh, Morada School in Athens, but then he went to University of Essex, University of East Anglia, University of Cambridge, University of Sydney, Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs, where he taught at the University of Texas. Uh, he is a he's the author of several books on game theory because he is also a consultant and econo- econ- economist in residence at the Valve Corporation. Huh. This is I mean the Valve Cor- that's one of the biggest gaming companies there is, and he, and he continues to be a consultant to them and economist in residence. Uh, I would call Shill. Yes, or something. And he looks like a, he looks scary. He looks like a, an MMA fighter. A freaky looking guy. What's his name again? It's Yanis, Y A N I S, Varoufakis. Victor Alpha Romeo, Oscar Uniform, Foxtrot Alpha Kilo India Sierra. Um, so I'm not trusting too much. Let's see. He was appointed finance. Oh yeah, no, I've seen this. He's been on a lot. Yeah, he's a commentator. Yeah, he's got that smarmy kind of like. Mm-hmm. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're first yeah. we're gonna whack this guy, and then we we'll take over his business. <laughs> Doesn't he look like we'll that? The other guy. He looks like a whacker. He does. <laughs> he looks like a total whacker. I know. His political career is this. This is his political career. He was appointed finance minister by Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras in the aftermath of the Syriza victory. A self-described, quote, libertarian Marxist. What? That's doable. Mm. Uh, Then he says several books, Game Theory. Game Theory. The hell is Game Theory, really? Uh, I can't summarize it for you. The global... Go to Wikipedia and you can get look up Game Theory and you will find a good summary. Okay. Um, The rise of... Oh... The rise of Doctor Doom. Anyway, uh, just thought that was interesting to point out. They're calling him Doctor Doom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look wow. at his face. Come on. Yeah, I know. He's yeah. a Doom looking guy. Doom looking. Doomy. Very doomy. It looks like he's got to uh, mm. take care of himself. Mm. Looking guy. And just because everyone else will ignore it, I thought that this was just one of the most interesting. Um, Interesting pieces of video that I've seen. It's something that we uh, we used to follow quite a while ago. <laughs> Another tale of the Hollywood Whackers. This is the Randy Quaid video with his wife Evie, as they are still apparently somewhere on the lam. Have you seen this? No, I, I lost track of the story. Oh, I thought my that it was all over. I thought he goodness. was back in Hollywood no. doing uh, bit parts. No. And I shall, narr- I shall narrate a bit of this uh, video, the audio for it. Um, so we're seeing a shot of what looks like a, mm, like a longer-term hotel room kind of thing. Um, his wife, Evie... A residence inn. Yes. His wife, Evie, Evie, is in the background. She's laying on the bed in a bikini, or it could be like Victoria's Secret, kind of a little lingerie with dark sunglasses on. Brandy's in the foreground with a completely white beard, and, uh, you know, he's looking crazy. He's looking pretty crazy. 
Uh, reminder, uh, things went incredibly wrong with him a couple of years back. And he was on the, on the run and they were being arrested. And just, just a crazy, crazy story. Uh, he is, of course, well known for Independence Day. And what was the other uh, big hit he had? Oh, he had a bunch of yeah, movies. He, he was pretty good. And he was on Saturday Night Live for a long time, yeah. too. And uh, so now he's, he is, has been whacked by Hollywood. Hi, I'm Randy Quaid. And this is my wife, Evie. I help media giants News Corp and Warner Brothers Entertainment earn well over a billion dollars for the film's Independence Day and Christmas vacation. Oh, yeah. What did I get in return? A Warner Brothers exec, Bruce Berman, stole my house. It happens. And News Corp's The New York Post continues to smear me to high heaven with a pack of lies. For good measure, Warner Brothers even had my wife and I falsely arrested six times by TMZ. <laughs> TMZ apparently arrested him. No, for real. Well, <laughs> that's really how it works. Hashtag PMC. Police media corruption. He's, he's nice. This is great. Bum! <laughs> Bum! Evie and I have been put through a living hell, a living hell of biblical proportion. So how do we retaliate? What do we do? Oh, any idea, John? <laughs> Can you guess well, what he's going to do? first gonna... of all, <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Which is that when we first did this guy yeah. story, yeah. it was about this, uh, this kind of an underground Hollywood whackers mafioso kind of thing going on in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It wasn't up front the studios. It was some alien kind of thing to Hollywood ancillary. Mm. There was a guy who killed the public relations woman. And then, the, oh, right, the, right. That is coming back to me. Yeah, there's a public relations yeah. woman, and there's a bunch of other these mysterious deaths. And the public relations one was particularly screwy. Ch Chasen yes, is her name. Yes, yes, yes. It was yes, particularly yes. screwy because there was a guy on a bicycle that drove up next to her and shot her. And then that and guy the, got whacked by the cops. And then that guy just ended up getting killed. And that was, and there was more similar kind of, this is like three, four years ago, yeah. similar types of scenarios. And this guy was the main player because he came out and said they were going to kill him. Right. They, and he was, was the whack. one, yes, he was saying that they're Hollywood whack. They whack people. Yeah. Right. Well. And so now it's the studios out to get him and Fox and Murdoch. I mean, come on. This, 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 this is not the same story, but go on. Well, I still have a few tricks, too. This is the very same shirt that I wore in ID4 when I saved the world. <laughs> Another act that Rupert Murdoch still hasn't thanked me for. So, Rupert, you want to fuck me? I'm going to fuck you. Evie, put this on. So he has a mask of Rupert Murdoch's head, like a cutout picture mask. Yeah. And now his wife comes forward, leans into the camera, bending over, putting the mask on. And then Quaid now backs up. He's not wearing pants. You don't, you just see his legs. And he's getting behind her. Maybe you'll thank me for this. <laughs> he spits on his hand. <laughs> And then he starts pretending to bang Rupert Murdoch, which is his wife with a mask. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Dog noise. The dog is a dog. The dog is barking. Oh, together, Rupert. Yeah. Together, Rupert. Oh, you have a to... dog in the room? Yes. <laughs> and is barking? And he's banging his wife from behind who's wearing the... the the, the the Rupert Murdoch mask. <laughs> yeah, it has to be seen. It has to be seen. This we have a link in the show. Oh, notes. Of course, Not together <laughs> we'll wipe out police media corruption. Yeah, oh, Rupert. Touch <laughs> what? Ooh, wipe out corruption. The dog is the touch. <laughs> yeah, it's nine more seconds. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> I think he's great. Some reminisce about Charlie Hebdo in that scene. I'm sure of it. Oh man, you see this? It's just so bizarre. He guy, yeah, he must. He's lost his marbles. Just no, um, but I think. Well, he's he, he's Randy Quaid. Is not like an unknown lame actor. The guy has no. But real Annie, crit. Annie, but look at what happened with that other. You know, with the the winning guy. 
the oh uh, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. I mean, a lot of these guys are bipolar. They got issues. Yeah, but that I was think Sheen's I, bipolar. Sheen is it's drugs and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, well, there's that. I don't know if Randy Quaid is on drugs. Well, he's into something wrong. Mm. <laughs> it is funny though. Uh, yeah, when you see the video, it's just yeah. I will definitely check that out. Bizarre. Okay. Um, uh, let's talk about the Silk Road guy. Oh, okay. I I, I uh, I'm au courant, but I had have nothing on him. Talk to well, him. he is uh, arrested, if, and they, they, which is a while ago. Now, he just the, yesterday or the day before, he's found guilty on all charges, and it looks like a trumped-up case. But, uh, but, uh, question? Yes? Um, uh, as far as I understand, there were no actual charges of uh, trying to kill someone. Those were not charges? Yeah, I believe that's true. Okay, all right, good. But let's play Silk Road uh, AJ, which I think is the first of the two clips, uh, just to catch people up. Uh, okay, hold on. That's El Jazeera. This yes. is an El Jazeera report. Yes, it is. The man who ran the notorious website Silk Road has been convicted in federal court. A jury found Ross Ulbricht guilty on drug trafficking and money laundering charges. His website allowed users to buy all sorts of illegal goods, including drugs and fake IDs. Ulbricht faces up to life in prison when he is sentenced in May. Hmm. Now, that was followed by, I think this was a, a report from one of the, this was, I don't think it was RT, it may have been uh, France 24, but this is a little longer report of from the ground and uh, discussing some of the screwiness to this case. Well, I can tell you that the jury took hardly any time at all, just three and a half hours, to find the defendant, Ross Albrecht, guilty on all charges, seven of them, ranging from drug trafficking to conspiracy to commit money laundering to a criminal enterprise kingpin charge that's usually reserved for people uh, in the mafia, for heads of mafia, a very serious charge. The prosecution uh, in their case laid out how they spent two years investigating the dark website known as the Silk Road where illegal drugs were bought and sold. They, in that time, were trying to link a man known only as Dread Pirate Roberts, the administrator of the site, to a real person. And they detailed for the jury just how they did that. Uh, they said that they found Ross Ulbricht's name through a basic Google search and spent two years infiltrating the, uh, the work, uh, workers of the Silk Road, getting to know the operation, how it was happening, and built a case bit by bit. The jury had to pour through thousands of pages of documents uh, that showed what the Dread Pirate Roberts was doing and saying and how that paralleled the life of Ross Ulbricht as laid out by the prosecution through emails and Facebook posts and so on. It was a trial, a conviction, an investigation that took place almost entirely online. Uh, it was a very interesting case watched by privacy advocates. The defense argued that the government had the wrong guy. Ross Ulbricht, yes, he started the Silk Road, but he had handed off the reins only to be lured back in as a fall guy for the real dread pirate roberts mm. they argued that all of the evidence presented by the government was just a little too convenient and that information online can be so easily manipulated that it shouldn't be used to connect ross albrecht to the dread pirate roberts but at the end of the day the jury did come back uh, on the side of government prosecutors again guilty on all counts oh that's troubling very troubling. I found this whole thing to be distressing. It sounds he, like they like they don't have a real physical connection. Between they have no him. evidence. Wow. They they have a trumped up bunch of evidence of the stupid jury. Okay, you know the government's never they're they're looking out for us, and so they bought into it. It may not hold up when they appeal. So they have pictures of the guy, and he's a he does little rock climbing, and he looks and his teeth are need work. <laughs> he, uh, there's, they never found any money that I know of. We talked about this when they first arrested him. He's living in a shithole apartment with three right. other roommates in right, San Francisco. Right, right, right. Uh, the money, nobody talks about where's the money, all this money he supposedly made. Uh, and the guy has a look about him that's, I, you know, it's hard to believe is a kingpin of any sort. And, uh, cause kingpins, I have to, I don't want to generalize, but guys who are into being kingpins, you know, big shots. They have trappings. You don't find, you know, I mean, it's, it's a nice storyline to have in a uh, movie, maybe, where you have the unassuming uh, character. I think Meyer Lansky was probably an example of that, the famous gangster who lived in a, just a tract home in Florida. I mean, this is a, a, a possibility, but 
generally speaking, the guy has to have a nice car or something. Did not did they not arrest him? And he had the lab. He was on the laptop at the time. That that then they that's where they got all their information from that he, that they were connected it to him. <coughs> well, the problem is that the way this is presented to this in this case that that was never brought up because this is all all huh. the, all the research was done online and they found him by a Google search and they found the pair you know which by the way you, anyone could be set up this way yeah they gave him a laptop and said <laughs> here you go check this out we'll be we'll be back in a moment. And they, you know, the guy supposedly, the way they ran the case against him was they had found parallels. The guy's like, he was at a Starbucks, and apparently the pirate is at a Starbucks at the same time, according to Facebook posts. Is that good enough to convict somebody? Well, I guess with the thousand pages of all these coincidences, or Mm. or supposed coincidences, or rigged coincidences, or we don't know, Mm. we have to look at this document. Mm. Uh, It was, but it's pretty... There's and they had all these guys they infiltrated, but they didn't bring any witnesses in. Is that what you're telling me? Is there a copy of this uh, of this decision it's, it'll be online? online somewhere. Yeah. I'd love to dig into that. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it's a good going to be a good read. I've read these these kind of comp- these cases. If you can get a hold of the whole, you know, the did he plead case. not guilty? Yeah, of course he did. <clears throat> And he st- he claims he did, did not. He said, "Yeah, he was uh, working, uh, did some web development for these guys, and right, that was that." Right, right. That sounds plausible. Well, whatever the case, mm. there's a lot of there's a lot of holes in the stories. Mm. All right, I'm, I, I'll look and see if that's now you're caught up. Yeah, I only wanted to mention it because I thought you might. Be yeah, I'll, it's, reading this thing. It's my know. wheelhouse, John. <laughs> you're right it's in there. to get a copy for you. Yeah. This is uh, so in our in our ever ongoing quest to um, make Vladimir Putin seem like a complete crazy guy. Putin! We have uh, it, this is made USA Today, which means it's the talking points are out. 2008 Pentagon study, which is not really a Pentagon study, but it was a study done by a think tank. Um, uh, which, although not conclusive, provided enough information for re- researchers to claim Vladimir Putin has Asperger's. Yeah, that was in today's uh, top of the stories on MSN News oh, yeah. when you booted up your your yeah. browser. Researchers, uh, researchers Putin can't, has Asperger's. Researchers can't prove their theory about Putin's uh, Putin and Asperger Asperger's as Asperger's burgers burg Asperger's. What, how do you pronounce it? It's Asperger's. Asperger's, uh, the report said, because they were not able to perform a brain scan. Ah, that's next. The report cites work by autism specialists as backing their findings. Maybe, uh, maybe he had a, a, a measles vaccine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so th- this is just another discreditation. And it's, weak. it's a weak one because the study doesn't re- there's no... No real proof, but they just say, oh, the guy looks like he has an autistic disorder. Look at him. Just look at him. But how do they actually come up with that? Let me see if I can find. Did you see any of uh, what their real findings were? Or were they? No, came? I just thought the story was bogus. I didn't follow up of on it. Of course it's bogus, but you have to look at. Oh, here it is. Uh, his analysis, the U.S. officials needed to find quieter settings. Okay, whose behavior and facial expressions reveal someone who is defensive in large social settings. Although these features are observed in Asperger's, they are also observed in individuals who have difficulty staying calm in social settings and have low thresholds to be reactive. Oh, so this is based upon facial expressions now. Jeez. Based, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, there you go. I just thought it was of note. Of note. And also hmm. the... Um, um, Uh, never mind. Forget the, Forget I even said that. Uh, what else do I have? There's a guy. There's a book out. A new book came out from a uh, author. It's called "Chasing the Scream," and it tracks the the war on drugs starting in the 30s when Harry Anslinger uh, had a bone to pick with everything. And uh, he, this guy, made a very interesting. This Johan Free or Breeze, whatever his name is. The writer, he told, he said something on here. And I have a clip that I did not know. I did not know any of this, and I think 
we should have it at least at our side when we see these arguments about legalizing marijuana. Screams in his turn. Finally, could you talk about President Mujica of Uruguay? Oh, he's one of the most amazing people I've ever interviewed. Mujica was a leader of the Tupamaro guerrilla movement. He was a dissident. He was kept at the bottom of a well for two years by the dictatorship. And he emerged to become the leader of his country. He lives in a shack. I went to the shack. I mean, it's no exaggeration to say David Cameron and Barack Obama wouldn't keep their shoes where Mujica lives. And he led his country to legalize marijuana, first country to legalize marijuana since the drug war begins in the 30s, because he'd seen what happened. And I went there to see this in northern Mexico, where the cartels have, if you, if a large part of the economy is in, is illegal drugs, the armed criminal gangs have more money than the state. They can hijack the state and take it over. And he saw if that comes and hits Uruguay, they're screwed. It's a small country. They don't have much military force. And really the horror that I saw, I mean, I interviewed the only person to ever be at the heart of one of the Mexican drug cartels and, and, and make it out to tell what it was like. And, you know, this is one of the most horrendous atrocities of the war on drugs is what it does to the supply route countries. Hmm. Yes. Now, I didn't know it was, uh, that it was legal in Uruguay. I don't believe it's the first country that legalized. I think uh, Holland was legal forever. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Holland has tolerance, but not legalized. Uh, uh, Portugal decriminalized. Portugal has Portugal, well, they, they decriminalized. decriminalized. I right. guess by some some uh, logic you could probably and all say. Of, and all of that's being turned back now because of the harmonization of the EU. It's forget about it. It's all over. There's more legal marijuana in, available in America now than Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, and there's, I guess, mm-hmm. a couple more coming up for yeah. grabs. Yeah, and when it comes to gay marriage, we have now 36 states in America. We're not the big homophobes we used to be. Well... Anyway, I just thought it was interesting that Uruguay and the logic was different. It was. Homosexuality is such a pain in the ass. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Very off the wall. <laughs> um, I, did, I did know about the, this guy in Uruguay. There's been several pieces on him living in the shack. I think that. I have an. Yeah, I just thought. I, I, yeah, he seems like a, like an interesting, interesting character. Guy. Uruguay might be the place to go. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an interesting. I ran into this clip. This is just an offbeat clip. It's a clip about Tanzania and this problem with witches. Oh, and there is. They started. I didn't clip the whole thing because it was actually kind of gruesome. This guy's describing what happened to his sister. Or something. they grabbed her and beat her up and chopped her arms and legs off with machetes and then threw in a pile and burned her. Nice. Because she was a witch. Huh. And I'm, I always wonder about some of these African countries and some of the logic of the thinking that goes on into, into uh, developing whatever culture they have or don't have. And this little report has a punchline that just like, oh, maybe this is part of the problem. <laughs> If you tell the patients that they have been bewitched by somebody, you just create a conflict between the two. That is when killings can happen. Behind the suspicion often lies a more sinister motive, greed. They think the only way to access that property, be it cows, be it farms, be whatever, is to, to, to claim that this lady is a witch and in so doing then it justifies for her death. A simple accusation of witchcraft can condemn a woman to death, leaving her property and wealth to the accuser. Really? They gotta get their they gotta get it together. Yeah, yeah, you accuse me. somebody of being a witch and you get their stuff. Yeah. Sounds and they kill her. Sounds fair. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I have two things um, left. One is I stand corrected. Uh, it was Glenn Double N, producer Glenn, um, who uh, corrected me. The imitation game, uh, which is about the Enigma machine, which does not properly credit the Polish cracking of the code and, uh, and really setting all this up. Uh, I was wrong. There is one mention in the movie. Here it is. This is unacceptable. If you wish to discuss the complaint, I suggest to make a proper appointment. Alexander. Complaint? No, no. Hugh Alexander has denied my requisition for parts and, and, and equipment that I need to build the machine I've designed. Your fellow codebreakers are refusing to work with you, and they've filed a formal complaint. It is inspired by an old Polish code machine, only this one is infinitely more advanced. If you don't respond to the complaint, I shall have to take it up with the Home Office. There you go. There, there is mention. An old Polish machine. 
Oh, that's all Polish. <laughs> that's about it. And then the, th- the second thing I have is we had uh, Tom Wheeler, chairman oh. of the um, FCC, come out and say, okay, I'm ready to circulate my ideas. It seems uh, surprisingly very much uh, like the president's idea of shoving stuff under Title II, which we really, of course, there's nothing to read yet, nothing to see. I have two Wheeler clips. I have two Wheeler clips. Are they from uh, PBS? They might be. Because I have two from PBS. We'll see what you got. Here we go. One. You want to make sure that you've got protections in place so that consumers know that when they go to the Internet, it's going to be fast, it's going to be fair, and it's going to be open. And at the same point in time, you want to do it in a way that's not going to constrain investment. Because obviously we want people, companies, to be building faster and more ubiquitous broadband networks. So it's been a balance of both of those. Uh, The general consensus that I saw amongst the tech uh, press and media was, great, fantastic, finally something good. This is going to be awesome. And it's not going to be awesome, people, because this is going to bring in regulation which restricts content that may flow if it is based on law, as in unlawful content or unlawful network traffic. This will be the wording in the legislation. Clip number two. We're really not doing utility regulation. Not really, except we're putting it under Title II, which is utility utility regulation. regulation. Here, utility regulation, it was developed for a monopoly model. What we're doing is we're taking the legal construct that once was used for phone companies and pairing it back to modernize it so it specifically deals with this issue. So it's not really utility regulation, but it is regulation to make sure that there is somebody watching out for the consumer, that like you said, there's no paid prioritization, there's no blocking, there's no throttling. No blocking. Uh, Pay attention. Uh, That would be only of legal and lawful content. And most important, there will be ongoing rules... In perpetuity. What? In perpetuity? Ongoing what? Ongoing rules in perpetuity. Let's just hear that again. And then he qualifies that, by the way. Prioritization. There's no blocking. There's no throttling. And most important, there will be ongoing rules in perpetuity so that there'll be a yardstick to measure what's fair for consumers. Because we don't know what the Internet's going to be five years from now. And we don't know what the various tricks are going to be five years tricks. from now. But we're going to tricks. have a referee on the field. We'll have a referee on the field, a yardstick, rules in perpetuity, and what tricks will be. I mean, wow. Oh, yeah. No, this is this is horrible. This is bad but, for everything and everybody. And I think I think one of these two clips of mine, mm-hmm. I believe, is is a tech reporter for Al Jazeera. Oh, good. And and you can see where they're how they're handling this. And I think you're right. I think most of the tech community is going in this direction. Try let's play the first one. I see if the, the op ed clip. Yeah, and see, see what that is. Because he wrote an op ed which was published in Wired, uh, which doesn't tell us. No, much. I thought it was the New York Times. Oh, I got it from Wired. Um, okay, well, well, whatever. He, he wrote an op ed. There we go would share a slower, more crowded digital highway. That segregation, critics say, would kill the free and open Internet as we know it. What Wheeler is proposing is a plan that regulates Internet service the same way the government regulates phone service or, well, the highways. In an op-ed, Wheeler wrote, The proposal I present to the commission will ensure the Internet remains open now and in the future for all Americans. So that's an, uh, that is an, a tech journalist. And that's his opinion, which is very pro, pro-wheeler. I mean, I don't understand what, what, if everyone's hypnotized or they don't see the, the problem here, but they, they don't. What's also so, interesting is throughout this interview with uh, uh, Gwen Eiffel, it was about 11 minutes, he keeps referring to ISPs solely as cable companies, which is interesting because that could be, A, just his thinking in general, that nothing else exists. Well, he comes from Comcast. He does. Or it could also be that this regulation may not apply necessarily to non-cable company ISPs. I don't know, but wouldn't that be interesting? 
it seems unlikely. Let's mm-hmm. play the second part of this clip and see where this goes. The proposed rules would prevent broadband providers from blocking or limiting content. The FCC will vote on Wheeler's proposal later this month. Now, in the message that FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler posted on the Internet today, he also mentions that these rules will apply to mobile broadband as well. And that addresses one of the great criticisms of the FCC, that they've always been behind the technology when it comes to regulation. Now it seems they're trying to make sure that the Internet reaches us the same way the highway does, free and open, guaranteed to all, no matter how we visit the Internet, whether it's through a browser, on the phone, or through some other device in the future. Check with reporting for us. Wow, great tech report. Through a browser. Um, I'm, I'm going to say it right now. I'm just rereading his, um, his op-ed. This is going to be exactly what the president called for. And the giveaway is in this. Uh, using this authority, and he refers to uh, Title II authority to implement and enforce open Internet protections. Using this authority, I am submitting to my colleagues the strongest open Internet protections my God, ever proposed by the FCC. These enforceable, here it comes, bright line rules, that's the president's wording right there, will ban paid prioritization, the blocking and throttling of lawful content. There it is, lawful content and services. I'll say it again, the blocking and throttling of lawful content and services. Some services will be unlawful. I propose to apply, to fully apply for the first time ever, those bright line rules to What's mobile, bright line bro- rules even mean? Oh, we, we looked this up last time. Yeah, I guess. Here, bright line rules. Let me get a definition for you. But this is exactly what the president's, uh, here it is, bright line rule. Uh, this is according to uh, Wikipedia, which we know. A bright line rule is a clearly defined rule or standard generally used in law composed of objective factors which leave little or no room for varying interpretation. The purpose of a bright line rule is to produce predictable and consistent results in its application. Bright line rules are usually standards established by courts in legal precedent or by <laughs> legislatures in statutory provisions. Bright line rules are often contrasted with its opposite balancing tests, where a result is dependent on weighing several factors. So this is going to be so clear. Um, but the but the thing that no one is talking about, and there's the verge. This is great. And all the comments. Yeah, finally, man. Netflix won't buffer. Fucking asshole. Stupid morons. Sorry, Tourette's. Actually, if you look at this and the kind of lawsuits that are going to occur, and we've already heard from that woman that heads up the um, mobile industry. Yeah. And the fact that the U.S. Congress has passed laws specifically about mobile broadband, mm. and we don't need any of these rules, but they're going to implement them anyway. Yeah. We're going to see probably more buffering because oh. Netflix has unfairly got servers at all the ISP uh, colo- as co-located devices because they have their, their what they call their web appliance sitting at, for example, sonic.net. Comcast refuses to put these in because it right. costs too much to operate, is their argument. Right. Although they have similar devices for their own movies. But now, if everything's got to be fair, you can't have these appliances giving unfair advantage to uh, Netflix. I don't see how you can rationalize it. Those things have got to go. Well, I would very much like to see what their, what the technical implementation is going to be, uh, specifically because the Internet was built on paid prioritization. It's called peering, and, you know, the, and the opposite is you purchase transit. I mean, this is how it was built. This is how it was built. And if you put in Title II, you're not... Actually, that's how it evolved. In the early days of the Internet, 1969, there was no the peering and all these... And paid transit and all this stuff was not even thought of. Agreed. Agreed. That's how it evolved. Agreed. And the good news is, of course, that this doesn't really do much to the network itself because the network is the beauty, the services and products that they're talking about, which is Netflix and Facebook and Twitter and Google and all these things. That's all going to be regulated. But when it comes to distributed hash tables and there will be ways to get around it without any problem, but it will not be for the general population because there will be no money to be made um, with services like that. Um, 
So it will not become the great equalizer that it could have been where we really have people um, conversing across the globe about how we can change things. It's just over. That's not going to work. They finally did it. When this happens, ah, it'll be decades before we get anything going again. Well, they've been planning on, on, on this government takeover so they could regulate it because, it's, you know, it's out of control. From a government perspective, it's out of control. It's out of control. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't censor it. You can't do anything. You can now censor it. Yes. You the, deem at, something at, illegal. Oh, that's hate speech. You can't at, run that. we got to right. shut your website down. That's right. Hate speech will Just be forbidden. It, it yeah. goes blocked at the ISP level. Yeah. But right at your access level. Yeah, and I've and, speech and just Hate speech. No good. Yeah, when you hear him literally say lawful, no blocking of lawful content and services, a service will be you know, BitTorrent, BitTorrent Sync, whatever it is. If, if they can, if they can, they will. Here, yeah, here's the verge. I hate these guys. Listen to this. Mm, this, is, this, this is probably Neelai. No, it's not. Oh, TC Sada, whatever. Um Headline, net neutrality wins. <laughs> FCC will propose strong Title II regulation. Uh, and let's look at some of the comments from the sheep who think that this is great. Uh, that, I, I've yet to see a single thing. This is good news, says uh, here, the real JT. I hope the news was delivered directly to David Pierce. After all those Neelai burns, he deserves some love. man it's just everyone's all in they think this is great they think this is they've been brainwashed into believing this is what you need sorry and you know what there will be a day and and I'm, i hope we're still alive and someone will say you know damn dvorak and curry were right this sucks <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this kind of like it, i don't think it'll take that long before people realize that this isn't going to work and it's going to be too late because he said himself in, per- per- in perpetuity. perpetuity. Once he said, once the government gets his camel head into the tent, mm. you're screwed. Yeah. Yes. We've done everything we can. And curiously, all these same guys are all into this net neutrality bogus argument. And now it was just switched over to this newer sounding argument, the independent side for the free, free and open, open Internet. Whatever that means. All these guys were the same guys when this whole thing began. Oh, God, keep the government away from this because this thing is this is great. It's, it's too good. Evolving mm-hmm. all these things without the government. Mm-hmm. No, we don't want the government. We don't want the government. The government. And now the same people say, oh, we need net neutrality. But even it's not really an issue. Less than 10 minutes to go. Okay. <laughs> I think we should actually end now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, let's see. The only other thing. Mm, no. So I got stuff for Sunday. Keep some stuff over. Uh, I got the aviation news. We have to talk about a couple things that have been happening. Yeah, let's talk about that in the next episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, also, some uh, more poppy stand drug news. I might have some tech news we could look at. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to deconstruct Singularity University for you. Oh, yeah. fun. Yeah, these guys need some deconstruction. and getting very, very annoying. Deconstruction or a takedown? I don't know if I can take anybody down by myself. Well, that's probably true. But, uh, I, can, uh, I can certainly, certainly give it a try. Thank you all. <laughs> Baying at the moon. Baying at the moon. Yes, that's the one I was looking for. Thank you. Exactly what I needed. All right. Um, hey, I'm going to be in New York next week. Why? Huh? Why? Why? Because I can. Well, still. Yeah, because I can. Just to go float around, no real purpose? Yeah, a buddy of mine's there. I'm going to hang out a bit. No. Yeah. I mean, not, not no purpose. I'm going to get some news from New York. Yeah. yeah. We could get something good. You never know. Possible. <laughs> Bloomberg's going to get the new guy. You should be excited. I am. Whenever the show's on the road, fun things happen. Yes, I'm. I'm jacked up. I can tell. <laughs> you sound completely jacked. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Remember us at dvorak.org/na. We need uh, all the help we can get. Coming to you from FEMA Region Six here in the Crackpot Condo. In the morning, everybody. I'm Adam Curry, and from Northern Silicon Valley, where it's supposed to rain like hell tonight. We'll see. I'm John C. Dvorak. We'll be back on Sunday, right here. 
on No Agenda. It was worth it. It was worth it. Everyone's crazy about a dude named Ben. We'll help chart a path forward. They're bang at the moon, something that is not going to uh, uh, to work. And instead of proposing any, which would be welcome to hear, good suggestions they may have to approve the Affordable Care Act, they're bang at the moon 56 times. I'm Joe Biden, and thank you for taking the time to listen. Adios, mofo. The best podcast in the universe. Dvorak.org slash N-A.